testing. Testing, testing. Testing, one, two, testing. Testing. Testing, testing, testing. Oh. Testing, testing, one, testing. Testing, testing. Testing, testing, te testing. 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 Hello. Hello.
test testing testing hello testing 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 Testing. Okay. Hello, hello.
Our meeting, the time right now is 7.33. Um, Katie, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you all for being here tonight. We do have a full board, including student board members. On your agenda, we are now on I section C, and this is sections item C3, announcement of actions taken in closed session. Roger, would you please read out as clerk? Okay, first action. In closed session today, by motion of member Maya Phillips, seconded by member Roger Dome, the board voted to reject the tort claim of JAA minor dated March 31st, 2023 by the following roll call vote. It was unanimous. Um, second one. In closed session today by motion of member Darren Drum, seconded by member Dan Summers, the board voted to reject the tort claim of PRA minor dated uh, March 31st, 2023, by the following roll call vote, and it was unanimous. And the third one, in closed session today, by motion of member Darren Drum, seconded by member Dan Summers, the board voted to enter into and approve of a settlement agreement in special education litigation, OAH case number 2023 zero two zero zero one one by the following roll call vote and that was unanimous and then the last report out in closed session the board unanimously issued superintendent thurman a positive performance evaluation accordingly a proposed extension to the term of the superintendent's contract will be brought forward for board consideration in open session at its next regular meeting <coughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> and then one more uh, motion board voted to join in a social media lawsuit with Franz Law Group moved by Summers and seconded by Dome and that was also unanimous okay thank you yes Darren. I have a comment um, specific to the uh, superintendent's evaluation that's a procedural thing where we can only say he did an okay job um, and, and really, that's, the, that's our only choice. I'd like to add to that and say I'm very pleased with his performance this year. He is the person that we interviewed last year. He is genuine, he is kind, and he leads this district from the front, and I'm very pleased with your performance this year. Thank you very much. Um, I almost said President Drum, my first ever board president drum, <laughs> and uh, just um, for the whole board, for their, uh, just from the day one, very first interview, and just going through all this time, I appreciate your support very, very much. Um, just for my family and I, thank you. He's very led nice. us through every challenge that we've had with, with grace and with a firm hand and, um, and with a, a, a laser focus on what is best for the students of this district. So, well done. I will take this opportunity to read a prepared statement on behalf of the board, and it is Dear Superintendent Thurman, the Governing Board of Ramona Unified School District is happy to report a positive performance evaluation for your first year with our district. The board is pleased with your performance and leadership. You are a good human being, and those traits are evident in your interactions and reflect, reflect positively in the district. Your handling of crisis situations inspires trust and confidence that the district superintendent has things under control. Moving forward, it will be important to keep student learning at the forefront of focus, keep expenses in check, and address facility needs, all while keeping a healthy work-life balance. You are developing an excellent team, and we are excited to see where we go in the year to come. So thank you very much. I just want to thank everybody also for your support and just for the team here um, that I could not do this without, and uh, most of all for the board's support just from day one um, and the the um, guidance and direction and support for, for the administrative team and for uh, the entire RUSD community. So thank you. I'm very, very grateful. All 
All right. We are now on item C4, and that is instructions for addressing, addressing the governing board. Okay. The Ramona Unified School District welcomes your participation at the district school board meetings. Your participation assures us of continuing community interest in our schools. To assist you in the ease of speaking and participation in our meetings, the following guidelines are provided. Orange request to be heard cards are approved to all audience members who wish to speak on any agenda item and or under the category of item E, public comment. These presentations are limited to three minutes per person or 15 minutes per item. Submit the completed orange cards to the board's recording secretary in advance of the item presentation. Orange request to be heard cards will not be accepted once the agenda item has commenced. Speakers are asked to direct all comments to members of the board. All participants are asked to be respectful of other speakers when they are addressing the board. Public comment is set aside for members of the audience to raise issues that are not specifically on the agenda. These presentations are limited to three minutes per person or 15 minutes per item. Public comments may be submitted online at the link listed at the top of the agenda. Please note that electronically submitted comments will be printed and distributed to board members and will not be read aloud during the meetings. Thank you, Roger. <coughs> we are now on item C5, and that's approval of the agenda. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. We are now on item C6. That's approval of the consent calendar. I'll move approval. Do we have a second? Yes, I will second. All right. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries. Uh, on that consent calendar, did we have some announcements we wanted to make? Yes, tonight in closed session, the board approved our personnel report along with two new administrators. We'd like to welcome Michelle Monty to the assistant principal position at Ramona High School. Thank you for standing, Ms. Monty. Um, along, we also approved uh, Mr. Matthew Hudson for the maintenance supervisor position. Where is Matthew? There he is. Congratulations, Mr. Hudson. Thank you for being here. All right. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for your willingness to serve in the district in these capacities. All right. We are now on Section D, Recognitions and Presentations. And Item D1 is Recognition of Ramona Unified School District 2022-23 Valedictorians. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, President Perfect. It gives me great pleasure tonight to recognize three valedictorians. I'm going to start with Montecito High School, and I'm going to read some details about Miss Chloe Romero, and then uh, Chloe will have you come up and receive an award and get pictures, and um, we'll go forward from there. So um, some information about uh, Miss Romero. She is an ASB leader. She takes care of the morning announcement. She's the news anchor. Um, and also a participant in Skills USA, She has completed more than 125 hours of community service, spread over seven projects for the Lips Lippe Nation of San Yisab San Yisab Santa Isabel, recognized for her leadership and environmental contribution to the Lipine Nation. After graduation, Chloe plans to attend community college to pursue a career in nursing. She enjoys helping others and is very interested in a career in the medical field. Uh, Chloe currently works for the Julian Pie Company. In 2022, Chloe placed first in the Regional Skills USA competition for electrical construction wiring and fifth overall in the state competition. Chloe is a kind, these are comments from her principal. Uh, Chloe is a kind, funny, and mature young lady. As a student, she was an excellent participant and role model for her peers. She was willing to lead activities both in class and as an ASB leader on campus. She willingly took over the MHS morning announcements this school year, starting us off every day with a silly joke and a canned laugh. I've heard some of those from here. <laughs> Chloe is a positive student who is willing to step out of her comfort zone and lead her school and others by example. So Chloe, come on up, please. Okay. 
And she has her phone. So can you call the student up first so we can yes, see them while you idea. talk about yes. them? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> yes. A little, little more student. Will Miss Elena Rose Cervantes come forward, please? Thank you. <laughs> come on up. You can come there, and then I'll, I'll get to brag on you a little bit here, <laughs> and then we'll take fun. your picture. Yep, you're good. <laughs> All right. So Miss Cervantes, um, GPA. I forgot to read GPA before. 3.9. Congratulations, wow. amazing feat there. Mm -hmm. Extracurricular activities. Uh, Ms. Cervantes has been in Girl Scouts for 13 years. She was a troop secretary. She's been ASB for three years, class representative, and the 22-23 vice president. She has done yearbook for one year as a co-editor. It's a big job. Community service. Uh, Ms. Cervantes has done math tutoring, been in GSA and ASB events, breakfast and dinner community events, church events, altar serving, service at breakfast and dinner events. Girl Scout Troop launched the Bulldog Pantry at RHS, serving students who are food insecure. Thank you. Plans after high school, four-year university. Looks like Cal State San Marcos. Uh, general mathematics major. <coughs> Several awards and scholarships. Uh, Girl Scouts of America, Lifetime Achievement Award, 10,000 boxes of cookies sold. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, 2020 English One Honors Outstanding Student Award, Spanish One Outstanding Student Award, and Citizenship Award. 2021 Spanish Two Outstanding Student Award and Citizenship Award. 2022 Math Three and Outstanding Student Award. And 2023 Rotary Student of the Month. Congratulations. And um, Dr. Gunderson has a few words. As a product of both Ramona Community Montessori School and Mountain Valley Academy, Elena Cervantes represents all the best of our campus. With a quiet strength, she brings out the best in others, and that twinkle in her eye adds richness to class discussions and collaborations. Whether selling Girl Scout cookies, tutoring a peer in math, or checking yearbook layout layouts, Elena focuses on the quality of her interactions and work product. Elena has made RCC a better place, and we can't wait to see the ripples she makes out in the world. Congratulations, Elena. Right. Wow. Next we have from Ramona High School, Leah Brown. Could Leah yeah. come on up, please? Yeah. All right. Welcome, Leah. Current GPA, 5.0. What? <laughs> Cumulative, 4.45. Wow. Wow. That's um, yeah. amazing. Yes, yes, absolutely. Wow. Extracurricular activities, Leah is involved in uh, club soccer, the Rebels North, and then school soccer, three-year varsity player. Wow, congratulations. Uh, community service at the Ramona Library and the Poway Library. 
uh, plans after school to attend Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington, and major in environmental science. And she plans on obtaining a master's degree already. All right. Awards and scholarships. She has a scholarship from Western Washington University. Um, she's paying less in-state tuition instead of the full amount for this scholarship. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Um, AP Scholars with, dis with Distinction Award for passing at least five AP exams. Thus that amazing GPA. Uh, rural and Small Town Recognition Award for excelling in mathematics at a c as a citizen in a rural or small town. All right. Um, and then we have uh, Mrs. Rodriguez's comments here. Leah is a great student athlete. She works tremendously hard in the classroom to reach her goals and is an outstanding student. If you have ever watched Leah play soccer, she shows the same determination and aggressiveness on the soccer field. Her hard work and determination has paid off. She definitely has the heart of a bulldog. Congratulations, Leah. Wow. Wonderful. Well, you know, this night kind of kicks off a lot of these awards and recognitions, and I, I just uh, can't imagine uh, anything better than seeing the valedictorians come and how accomplished they are. So thank you for being here tonight and for, for your excellent uh, careers in, in school in Ramona Unified. All right, we are now on item D2, and that is <coughs> recognition of the Artful Visionary Award recipient. Yes, good evening, board. I am excited to share with you that on uh, April 25th, Edie Chapman was honored. Actually, Edie, can you come up first? Yes. Thank you. I was getting ahead of yes. myself, and, and we need to put you on the spotlight just like we yes. did the valedictorians. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> on April 25th, 2023, Edie Chapman was honored with the Artful Visionary Award hosted by Arts and Power in collaboration with the San Diego County Office of Education. Edie is an advocate for the arts. In fact, her deep passion that all students in RUSD have is that all students in RUSD have access to arts education. She believes that all students should be able to experience the joy and hope that arts education will bring into their lives. As a former English language arts teacher at Ramona High School, she would integrate arts into literature through plays, songs, dance, and other creative ways because she knows firsthand how art has changed, even saved the lives of students. One colleague shared, the way Edie teaches is, is like she's telling a story. You're learning through the story, but it's effortless because she draws a picture with her words. Even though the transition from being a high school classroom teacher to a teacher on special assignment in the district office, Edie stayed true to her devotion to the arts. She went all in to take the lead in developing the district arts committee this year, which was comprised of staff, parents, and students. It was under Edie's leadership and vision, the Arts Committee worked towards developing a comprehensive TK-12 plan for the arts education in RUSD. We are so proud that Edie is being recognized at the county level for her amazing work. Those of us that are fortunate enough to work closely with her already know how much she is positively impacting students, staff, and community of Ramona. Congratulations, Edie. Uh, okay, we are now on item D3, and that is recognition of the California Industrial Technology Education Association Teacher of the Year. I'd like to welcome Dr. Maravich up to help introduce this recognition tonight. Good evening. Um, 
Um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you all Catherine Worley. She's a teacher at West Hills High School and is the president-elect of the California Industrial Technology Education Association. And also, she just proudly told me she's going to be the first woman president ever in the history of CITEA um, since 1928. <laughs> I was hoping Nick would come up here. He is. He's right behind you. <laughs> is he? There we go. <coughs> Hold this up. <laughs> there you go. Board members and Superintendent Thurman, thank you for having me here today. Uh, back in March is when we actually gave him the award at our annual conference. Uh, the CITEA exists to help teachers in the skilled trades and industrial arts fields at all schools in the state of California. And uh, they've been around since 1928. No, I've not been a member since then, uh, <laughs> although sometimes I feel like it. Um, Nick has taught construction at Montecito High School for the past nine years. Not only teaches the practical skills to the students, but also the importance of being dependable and having a good work ethic, uh, the professional skills that everyone needs to get out into the real world. Through his past work experience and contacts in industry, he's been able to provide his students with many employment opportunities. From 2017 to 19, 38 of, student, of Nick's students completed OSHA 10 certificates. Of those, 33 are actively working in construction. In 2020, 64 students completed the OSHA 10 requirements, and many are already working while some are awaiting graduation. His students also compete in Skills USA in the Teamworks, and they won first place in 2018, 19, 21, and I think today you'll find out how they did this past uh, Skills USA competition. 2020, their chapter won six gold medals, three, and as three-time California state champions, his students advanced to the national competition in carpentry and teamworks. And last year, his program was featured in the spring issue of Skills USA Champions magazine. He helps his community with the different projects of building snack bars, repairing siding, um, all kinds of projects uh, with fifth grade class that I just found out tonight. He's hoping to restart that program. Uh, Montecito High School, as you know, enrolls new students every trimester. Um, students that are struggling to find their place in the world and with Nick's program, 70% um, of them are finding their way into the world in the skilled trades, which I have to say some of my students from West Hills in five years will be making more than I am after 35 years of teaching. So this is the way to go. The CITEA believes there is a direct correlation between what Nick is teaching and the program graduation rate. As one student told Nick, when I first came to Montecito, I'd never used a hammer. I thought I would just get through and try to work in fast food and stay out of jail. Now I have won competitions. I know how to build. I'm a carpenter. Nick Jordan, CITEA teacher. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jordan, for all your good work. All right, we are now on, I, I mean, it just keeps getting better and better here. We are now on item uh, D4, and that is report from our student board members. So uh, let's go ahead and start with Hannah. Okay, I'm gonna try and make sure I really speak into the mic. Um, good evening all, my name is Hannah Ferguson. I am the Student Board Representative from Mountain Valley Academy. Before I begin re my report, I would like to thank the members of the board and cabinet, President Perfect and Dr. Thurman, for allowing me to represent the student voices from MVA. Mountain Valley Academy is currently in the middle of Teacher Appreciation Week, and on behalf of MVA, I would like to thank all the teachers and staff that dedicate their time to making our district so amazing. The MVA Awards Night... Sorry, one second. The MVA Awards Night is set to take place on Ramona Community Campus Center Quad Tuesday, May 16th, beginning at 6 p.m., at which we will be awarding outstanding students who shine both academically and socially, as well as scholarship recipients. Um, board members, you'll find that there's a flyer for that as well if you'd like to attend. Um, our eighth grade promotion is set for June 6th at 9 a.m., and the class of 2023 graduation is set to take place on June 6th at 7 p.m. 
We appreciate our joint CIF agreement with RHS. This spring season, MVA student athletes have competed as part of the championship swim team, boys golf team, and the track and field team. Tonight and tomorrow night, MVA Drama is presenting the comedy mystery Dinner at 8, Dead by 9. A dinner theater option is available. And for next year, a reminder that the MVA Drama is an elective open to all RUSD high school students. The ASB game night is set to take place on May 19th, 5 to 8 p.m. There will be board games, bingo, karaoke, and snacks available. Our final spirit day will take place on May 17th, on which students will dress up as their favorite childhood character. Our June 5th, on June 5th, grades 9 through 12 will be heading down to Knott's Berry Farm for our end of the year trip. The spaghetti dinner, dinner fundraiser was well attended and our ASB face painting fundraiser was a success. This concludes my report. Thank you all for having me and have a wonderful night. Thank you, Hannah. <coughs> all right, next up, Katie. Hello, my name is Katie Drum and I represent the students at Ramona High School. Thank you to the board and Dr. Thurman for the opportunity to speak at all the board meetings for the 2022-2023 school year. As we're approaching the end of our school year, students are so busy. <laughs> AP testing took place from May 1st to the 9th and almost 300 tests were taken in total at RHS. To help students prepare for AP testing, our National Honor Society Club held an AP study session on April 27th in the library, which was a success. As our seniors are getting closer to graduating on June 8th at 7 p.m., we are very busy. Awards night will take place on May 18th from 6 to 8 p.m., and all grade levels will be recognized at this event. Scholarship night will take place on May 23rd at 6 o'clock p.m. at the RHS Outdoor Stage. Senior finals will take place on June 1st and 2nd. Senior checkout is on Monday, June 5th. And the next day, the 6th, is a very busy one for our seniors. Senior breakfast will start at 7.30 in the RHS Old Gym, and they will receive their caps and gowns. And then at 9.45 to 12, they will participate in the senior walk. The student population as a whole has been very, very busy the past few weeks supporting our positive student environment on our campus. Prom took place on April 29th at the Hyatt Regency Mission Bay Hotel, and the theme was Roaring Twenties. There was over 450 students in attendance, and they all had so much fun. There was dancing, a caricature artist, a photo booth, a 360 camera, card games, and amazing food. There was also three senior prom court winners. Our RHS agriculture program was also very busy at the end of April making corsages and boutonnieres for students going to prom. This was a great fundraiser for their program. On April 25th, the RHS band students were invited to play for the Arts Ovation Awards hosted at Grossmont College, and we are all so proud of this accomplishment. Our Bulldog student athletes have been representing RHS in such amazing ways. On May 9th, Ricky De Niro and Avery Baldridge went to CIF for boys doubles, boys tennis doubles <laughs> at Balboa Park. Girls softball has six zero wins in league, six, week, six wins, and they will be going to CIF playoffs. Girls lacrosse made it to CIF playoffs, and our boys swim team was league champs, and they were 6-0 in league. Girls swim team was 8-2 in regular season and 5-1 in league, and they were co-league champs, and Piper Williams was a Valley League champion diver. We had quite a few track and field league champs this season. Sterling Bryant was a league champ for the 110 meter hurdles. Ryan Pilar was league champ for the 1600 meter and the 3200 meter races. Lily Memel was league champ for the 100 meter hur hurdles. Jamil Kassab was league champ for triple jump and Josiah Tor was league champ for the 100, 200 and 400 meter wheelchair race. Our RHS Dance Productions program will be holding their spring dance concert on May 18th, 19th, and 20th at 7 o'clock p.m. in the RHS PA. Tickets are on sale at the ASB Finance window. Powder Puff will be taking place on June 3rd at 6 o'clock p.m. in the Bulldog Stadium. Juniors and seniors will be playing fla a flag football game, and we invite everyone to attend and wear black to support the seniors or pink to support our juniors. <laughs> The WASC Western Associ Association of Schools and Colleges Committee 
of five came to Ramona High School about two weeks ago and looked at all aspects of our school and our students reported Lee really enjoyed talking to our committee members. RHS ASB held their wellness week last week and it was a success. The dress up days consisted of wear your favorite color, twin day, Star Wars day for May the 4th, and PJ day on Friday. There was also an emotional support dog that came to RHS on Tuesday, May 2nd and students really enjoyed this. There was also other fun activities like four square in our quad. It is currently staff appreciation week and students are showing their appreciation for teachers in many ways including a luncheon that happened today during lunch. Tomorrow students will dress as tacky tourists for staff appreciation week and tomorrow is also RHS ASB's Area R event which is an event at Ramona High School where future Bulldog leaders from grades four to six are invited to build their leadership skills with the ASB team and our team is so excited to meet the students. Thank you again for this amazing opportunity. I enjoyed my time serving as a student board member this year. Nice report, Katie, as always. Thank you. And Spara. Good evening, Dr. Thurman, President Perfect, and the members of the board. Raylan Anison, a junior at Montecito, received the Excellence in Special Education Student Award from the North Inland Special Education Region's Community Advisory Committee. Raylan is part of our peer tutoring classes made up of MHH students who help in classrooms at Ramona Elementary School. Raylan works with the special education and preschool class and the teacher shared that she's an outstanding peer tutor. Our flag football team ended their season yesterday with back-to-back -back wins on Tuesday and Wednesday. Our players worked hard and played really well as a team. They were positive and most importantly had outstanding sportsmanship. Our April Rotary Student of the Month was Brandon Martinez and our May Student of the month was Richard Reyes. Montesino Seniors Award Ceremony is happening on May 18th at 5.30 p.m. on the MHS lawn and we have invited the board members to attend through Dr. Thurman's office. Our graduation ceremony is June 7th at 6 p.m. on the Wilson Field and we hope to all see you there. Very nice, thank you. You know, the board wants to thank you all for your participation this year. Your reports have been wonderful and you've really done a great job informing the board of what's happening at your respective schools and we do have some tokens of appreciation. So board and student board, please come forward and we'll do a picture and make a presentation. I'm going to read what our certificates say. This is a certificate of appreciation from the superintendent's office presented to, uh, this one's for Sparrow, uh, for being a student board member for a 22-23 school year to honor and recognize your providing exemplary service to the Board of Education in our school district. Thank you very, very much. All right, and we also have another small token of our deep appreciation for your work, a Amazon gift card for Sparrow, for KT, and for Hannah. Thank you all very much. Please give a round of applause for us. <laughs> Very nice. You know, this has just really been a fine group of student board members. I really appreciate the way each of you has really taken charge of your roles. All of your reports were thorough and meaningful and helpful to the board. So thank you so very much again for your participation here. Beyond participation, you really have been part of the team. Okay, um, we are now on item D5, and that is report from California School Employee Association, Chapter 733.
Do we have anyone? No? I see Ms. McDonald coming forward. Let's move on to the next item, D6, report from California Teachers Association. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> extremely hard to come to an agreement on bargaining this year and we hope that uh, the last and final step goes through tonight with your approval vote um, by the school board and after 12 months of extremely hard work in preparation uh, RHS had their full self-study accreditation WASC visit from April 30th to May 3rd like Katie shared from the students who took the committee on their first tour of campus to the meetings with focus groups and the leadership team. The visit was a resounding success. <clears throat> Thank you to the board members and district uh, leadership staff who ha gave up part of their Sunday and Wednesday afternoons to speak to the committee and also hear the results. The visiting committee had very positive things to say about our staff and students and commended how quickly we have come back after COVID and how far ahead of other schools and districts we are because of it. RHS had 36 freshmen attend a Math One Saturday Scholars session last week to review and get extra help, and they actually worked for four hours straight in math. Um, they worked extremely hard, and some even improved their grades by a full letter grade um, for their efforts in that day, both completing assignments and being able to retake tests. Since returning back from maternity leave, Mrs. Manring has had the opportunity to work individually and with small groups um, who are failing chemistry, uh, the majority of them being seniors who need the class to graduate, so very targeted interventions. And she is happy to announce that so far every single one of their grades has increased, with multiple students raising their overall grade by over 20%. The Fusion and NHS uh, leaders worked with Mr. Plum and Mr. Ballesteros to transform the front of the school Saturday, April 15th. Um, and after school, Fusion leaders installed a new Our Town sign and restored the back of the school. At Olive Pierce and, Olive Pierce and RHS, um, both had members of staff attend the BAR conference, that's BAR with two R's, um, and had an outstanding professional development, uh, professional development experience there at the Rancho Mirage um, last week. Nine members of OPMS and five members of RHS all went to the conference and are beyond excited about how we can improve. OPMS has added a Spanish language segment uh, to their Monday broadcast called OP Seminal uh, that is being anchored completely by EL students. The show is also produced by students entirely, allowing them to learn the exercise and skills needed to run a live stream broadcast. Many OPMS teachers shared about how much they love the last few weeks with the new teacher on assignment added on their campus. They shared how this has truly been the best few weeks so far this year. Mr. Hall has been nothing but good news for OPMS school safety and climate. He cares about kids and teachers and he hit the pavement running, making waves in a positive way. Kids can be heard saying things like, you don't want to be tardy. Don't be tardy today, hurry up. We love Mr. Hall, he actually holds kids accountable. Bottom line, teachers say this change has been good for OPMS. OPMS staff is busy preparing for Camp Pierce for Parents, Tuesday, May 9th. Eighth grade awards night will be Monday, May 22nd. And their end of the year celebration dance will be June 2nd in the inner quad. And of course, the seventh grade picnic as well as the eighth grade promotion will be happening on June 8th. At MVA, the spring Europe trip was a great success. The students all enjoyed some amazing experiences. RCCPTSA put on a great family dinner, uh, dinner night last week. 
This was both a social event and a big fundraiser for the schools. RCMS hosted Children's Night, where students brought families in to view their work, see some of their projects, and celebrate learning from all throughout their year. Both MBA drama students uh, and RCMS fifth and sixth grade drama students will be putting on their plays this month, uh, and elementary band students are looking forward to their first concert as well. Hanson Elementary hosted their open house barbecue last night. Uh, the annual talent show is coming up on May 24th, and their kindergarten field trip to San Diego Safari Park will be May 19th. This is the crazy time. We live by the <laughs> dots on the calendar this month, <laughs> um, but it's an awesome way to kind of wrap up the year. Thank you. What a lovely report. All right. All good. All right, we are now on Section E, and that's public comment. And this is the time that we take comment cards for items that are not on the agenda. We do have one, and that is from Robin Brainerd. Thank you. Three minutes. I know. <laughs> I timed it. You're not going to have to tell me to go sit down. I promise. Unless you've started already. I haven't. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, good. <laughs> We'll get this. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. Um, this <laughs> evening, I would like to address comments made during last month's school board meeting and then published in the local paper on April 27th. I would love to address the following beliefs, and I quote, information about political activism, protests, and lobbying should not be included in the US history syllabus. Gender issues should only be dealt with by families. Environmental issues belong in a science or environmental class. Well, anyone who has truly studied U.S. history knows that political activism, protests and lobbying, the rights of women and all people, as well as taking care of our environment, all play a major part in the story of our amazing nation. The Boston Massacre and Boston Tea Party were protests that contributed to the writing of the Declaration of Independence. In that declaration, Thomas Jefferson states, if a people are being injured and abused, it is their right, it is their duty to rise up against their abusers. Shays Rebellion, a political and economic protest, was a contributing factor to the men who went to Philadelphia to fix the articles. They got there and realized they weren't fixable and went on beyond their assignment and wrote the US Constitution. Some people called them treason. Madison, Hamilton, and Jay wrote fed the Federalist Papers to lobby voters to ratify the newly created Constitution. Labor leaders, consumer advocates, women suffragists, Teddy Roosevelt, John Muir all held protests and lobbied Congress in the early 20th century. After World War II, groups such as African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, Asian Americans, women, Americans with disabilities, and members of the LGBTQ community marched, boycotted, sat in, protested, and lobbied Congress for their rights. Women both lobbied for and protested against the ERA in the 1970s and protests took place after Lake Erie caught on fire, Three Mile Island experienced a meltdown, the crash of the Exxon Valdez, and numerous oil spills in the Gulf of Mexico. The results of this political activism and protest are National Park System, the Pure Food and Drug Act, the 19th Amendment, the Fair Labor Standards Act, Minimum Wage, the Civil Rights Act of 64, the Voting Rights Act, Title IX, Endangered Species Act, Clear, Clean Air and Water Acts, EPA, Earth Day, Superfund, Civil Liberties Act of 1988, the Americans with Disabilities Act, Gender Equity Act, BLM, and the Me Too movement. I could go on. There are these are just a few examples of political activism, protest, and lobbying that have had on our nation. These examples, along with many others, are in the standards. But more importantly, they are part of our nation's exceptional story. How can anyone believe they shouldn't be part of teaching US history in Ramona Unified School District? I ask you once again to trust us. Trust the content experts, the teachers. Trust the administrators who guide us. Trust the staff who support us in everything that we do. Trust that together we are going to do what is right for the students of Ramona Unified School District. Let us do our job. You won't be disappointed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your report. All right. <clears throat> 
can't comment because it wasn't on the agenda, but thank you. All right, Section F, Education Services, and the first item to address here is an information piece, F4, Presentation of Skills USA 2023 State Conference and Competition. Good evening, board members. I would like to introduce uh, Christine Hill, Robert Grace, Nick Jordan, Curtis Martineau. Did I miss anybody who's in the room tonight? CTE teachers in Ramona Unified. Very nice. To share some highlights from the 2023 State Conference and Competition. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having us. Robert Grace, Ramona High School. Nicholas Jordan, Montecito. Christine Hill, Ramona High School. Curtis Barnell, Ramona High School. Like we rehearsed that. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start out with Nick. He's going to chat about the Montecito students, and we'll talk about the Ramona High students and uh, our adventure at SkillsUSA State Conference. And which one? That one? Hey, there it goes. So this is a student organization that promotes you know, workplace skills, personal skills, and um, <coughs> excuse me, getting nervous up here, technical skills through education so we get our kids ready for the world of work some of them find their passion uh, in what they do with us the automotives the construction the engineering the welding all of it so we get them excited about learning and they go out there and hopefully get great careers and uh, mm -hmm. make a good living that's my goal <coughs> preparing leadership for the world of work that's the motto for skills you'll say there you go uh, first of all I want to say thank you for taking the time to uh, to highlight these these wonderful students and these great CTE, the Career Technical Education. Yeah, bring them up. Um, bring them up. Why don't, why don't we have students get to the left of Mr. Jordan? There you go. Yep. Good, good, good. No, Make room for your friends. Thank you. Um, anytime we can highlight our CTE, Career Technical Education, it's oh, very important. Just wait a little me. bit more. There you go. Sorry about that, Mr. Jordan. No, it's okay. We sure. just want to see all these fantastic students here from Rolanda Unified. There we go. It's about you. Yes, it is. It's about you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Now you're talking. Yeah, it's fine. You guys, tell us. Okay. I think we just moved them to the other side of the room. <laughs> there you go. Maybe we didn't practice this part. <laughs> So uh, this year, Excellent. Was, this year I was excited. Uh, we competed in teamwork with a team of four students that compete. They pretty much, uh, long story short, they build it like a. We don't know what building until we get Are they here? Okay. You just stick your stick your hand up so we see you. Yes. Excellent. Very nice. Uh, we got uh, first place, and the other team, unfortunately, only two showed up. But uh, in real life, when only two of your members show up, the other two picked it up. And Landon and his partner, Luke, not only picked up the pieces, they did an amazing job. Uh, wow. In real life, you have uh, people that don't show up to work, and you got to pick up the pieces. And that day, yes. they made their company money, and he made money, and he has a job tomorrow. So I'm nice. so proud of that. Nice. Uh, 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 team Team G, I did really well. They're the only team to finish the competition. Um, and not only that, they finished by lunchtime. Uh, oh. Also, we had Gabby Farrell is, is here tonight. Gabby uh, competed in carpentry. Um, I believe she got fourth place. She was just that short to come on the, uh, get it on the podium, which I'm very, very proud of her. And she is signing with Swinterton come this June. Nice. And she'll be going into the industry. I'm very excited yeah. about that. Uh, Kale Spielman is here. He's a two-time state champion in masonry. Um, and he defended his title. Uh, Kale defended his title, and we look forward to seeing how he does at the national competition, especially because we took a lot of great notes last year at nationals, and we're going to go back and we're going to give it our best. Um, we also had uh, two electricians, TJ Leach, which you guys all remember, and Sean Lehman is here. Thank you, Sean. Sean did an amazing job. Uh, he finished the competition, and uh, there's some stiff competition in electrical construction wiring. But I am proud of all these Montecito students and all the Ramona students because we went down there as a team as Ramona. And it wasn't just Montecito. It wasn't just Ramona High School. We're going as a team and, and to represent this town. So we're very excited about that. And thank you for, for highlighting them today. It's, it means a lot to me. So very nice. Thank you. Thank you.
So here's, here's some of our, some live action. Uh, there's Gabby building her thing. There's Sean actually doing his electrical. And there's all of us getting ready for the opening ceremonies. And then Landon with his amazing smile and his partner Luke, so yeah. And they're having fun up there. And that's the most important thing is they're having fun and, and they're, they're taking, they're, they're doing really well. And then uh, this is when they got the highlight they got on the, on the podium. They're very excited as you can see. Um, but it's, it's a, great, a great accomplishment for them to get up there and, and have that sense of pride of what they accomplished that day or those two days. It's a, it's a rigorous competition. The team works in masonry and electrical, very rigorous. I mean, I'm so proud of them, so. Job Toros. All right. Yes. We had 11 compete at the state championship, and we have uh, five going to nationals. Excellent. That, that's going to come up later. But anyway, uh, the Ramona group, we had a big year this year, and uh, 31 kids showed up for competition, so we'll kind of click through this a little bit. This is Mrs. Hill's squad, so. So the engineering team this year, um, we had five teams go, and they were competing. So there were five teams competing in the different categories. The first category was Principles of Engineering Technology, and that was one of our sophomore, Jackson Sheldon. He did an amazing job. Um, he uh, tested out two different types of truss systems for bridges and presented that to the, the panel. Um, we had Urban Search and Rescue with Nicole Peterson and Charlie Salt. They're sophomores of mine. Um, they had a lot of things happen there at the competition. Um, that Urban Search and Rescue is a robot that is remotely controlled, and um, the maze that they were told was totally different than what there was. Oh. But they did an amazing job and came in eighth out of the 30 that were there. Um, engineering, technology, and design are my seniors, and we had three teams compete in regionals. They came in first, second, and third. Um, <laughs> getting there. Nice. Sweet. Um, the interesting thing about engineering technology and design is they have to design their own product. So they're not mandated with anything when they get there. They're there to present their ideas and their prototypes to a panel of judges. And they're in the order that they placed in regionals. Uh, Jackson, Bradley, Ethan Homer, and Max Webster came in first in regionals. They have a life jacket that they designed. Um, it's a combination life jacket, uh, camelback, and another mm -hmm. kind of life jacket, grade three and four, I think. Um, team B was Riley Jensen, Niall Jacobson the Heron, and Audrey Norton. They have an airplane jack. Um, if you own an airplane or fly an airplane, you'll find that the only thing a pilot can do is to change the tires. And every plane is different, the struts are different, um, and they've been working with their mentor to come up with a new idea. In fact, they're also competing for uh, Team Mogul. It's a competition that Nick Cannon puts on with Shark Tank. Um, so if they make it in the top five, we're going to New York City. Uh, so that's very promising. Uh, team three was Jaden Campos, Trent Reyes, and Tyler Troyer. They're also seniors. They're developing a table for some of our special needs students that have issues with seizures and anxiety and things. So it's a, it's a, a specific <laughs> desk just for those students. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Martin. All right. Well, this was my first Skills USA competition ever. Uh, I think the first time in a long time at Ramona. Yeah, we had a, yes. haven't had a fab team in about 10 years. So. And this, this was the fabrication team. So we had two teams make it the state. Uh, they did place ninth and 10th. I'm excited about that because we were learning the process of it. Uh, we had uh, four Sissons and Keon Snell and Jacob McMahon in one team. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of you. And we also had Colby Smith and Shane Shane Willis and I'm not even looking at that. Uh, <laughs> and Jose Satina and another team. And so they had four hours to build a table. And it was a hexagon table. And the day before in the hotel, we went and I bought out all the wooden dowels at Home Depot and had in wood tools. I should have called Mr. Jordan because <laughs> we were sitting in the hotel lobby and cutting wood and trying to glue it together to make the actual table out of wood uh, in the lobby in the pool. So they had a really good time actually designing their, their stool before we went to it. It was a great learning 
curve for us. They had a good time, and a few of those guys were leaving tomorrow morning to go up to another welding finals up in Merced, so they're prepping for that. So it was a good experience. I thank Mr. Grace and Ms. Hill for helping us out and getting us involved in it, and for Vermont High School, because I had no clue this even existed. Oh, wonderful. Automotive kids, so jump through the maintenance line repair. Uh, Blake's here, uh, automotive service technology, uh, motor sur uh, motorcycle service, power equipment. Uh, Gracie uh, did well last year. These three of my medalists right here, and um, two of them are going to Atlanta, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and a couple of freshmen, uh, Jaden and Parker, the most helpful kids and the most polite kids, and I'm super proud of them. Um, just a good outing for all 31 of them, yeah, except for a couple of them in the pool, too. <laughs> Those engineering kids. Those engineering kids. <laughs> we didn't know what time it was. Uh, culinary <laughs> arts, Mr. Perez, first year with skills also. Micah Mendoza finished second last year. Uh, super busy senior this year. I think he was fourth, so just off the podium. But mm -hmm. he, he went there, did his best, and um, and also came back on Saturday and ran a track meet. And oh. So he was like <laughs> scattered. <laughs> busy, busy kid. Uh, medalists, there you go. Yeah, so uh, we had a... Uh, Power equipment, gold, maintenance, slide repair, bronze, a motorcycle, gold, and silver uh, from out of the auto shop. So great outing with these kids. I'm real proud of them. Uh, we missed auto service, but we got fourth there. So it's like, ah, uh, close. But moving forward. So the engineering medalist, this was our third place team. Um, we almost took, we almost swept it. We got first, third, and fourth. Uh, so they did really well. So this was the uh, life jacket team. And our gold medal winners who are here tonight, um, Niall, Riley, and Audrey. Uh, they've been doing an amazing job, and I know they're going to impress people when we get to, to nationals. I was going to say state, nationals. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is Ms. Hill's first trip to nationals, so. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Atlanta, here we come. Uh, Ten Ramona Unified School uh, students are going to make it to represent California in Atlanta, Georgia. We call it Hot Atlanta, June 19th mm -hmm. through the 24th. Three engineering teams, one masonry, one motorcycle, one power equipment, and the team works of four. So we're looking forward to it. It's a uh, wow. Proud of these kids for the efforts that they learn and put into, and they're passionate about some some their learning. Now they get to showcase it off against other kids just like them, going after the gold medal. So, in conclusion, hot Lana. We're so Woo. excited. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Group in for a photo, yeah. <coughs> Ford, why don't we go ahead and stand behind their picture? Uh, let's not try and get up there. It's too big a group. Come on in. Bunch up. Come on in. And could their there teachers you go. come in also? Teachers awesome. in here? Teachers hop in? slideshow but this came in right at the end of school um, UTI dropped off the kids scholarships so oh. Blake earned a three thousand dollar scholarship for his MLR Wow! Uh, second place motorcycle was five thousand and then Zach walking in black shirt won a full ride for thirty eight thousand to Woo. UTI all right so he's considering that one so yes yeah. yes 
Important consideration. Yeah. 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 Ah, oh, that was really excellent. What a great report, and great that the kids made it out here even though they're busy prepping for their next thing. All right, we are now <coughs> on item F5. And that is a report on pilot of instructional materials for Health 7. President Perfect and Governing Board, in June 2022, the board approved a seventh grade health course that will meet the state requirements for health in middle school. While health education is a state requirement, parents must be notified a minimum of 14 days prior to the first day of sexual health instruction. And according to Ed Code 51938 and RUSD Board Policy 6142.1, they may opt out of this portion of the health instruction and be given an alternate educational activity. Just wanted to have a little reminder before I went into the pilot piece for you, you. in regards to health. Um, as an information item this evening, we share two sets of instructional materials that will be piloted in the health course this fall. During the selection of materials for the pilot, a teacher credentialed in health, the middle school site administration, district leadership, and parents spent time reviewing curriculum for pilot. Parent and student feedback will be requested throughout the pilot, and materials will be available for community re review in the hall at the district office and at school sites. Additionally, school sites will review the pilot materials with their school site council, and district leadership will present them to the district advisory council for input as well. This is an information item. All right, very good. Board members, we've received information. Do we have any questions on this? With the um, it's a long course, it means um, it effectively eliminates year-long electives like band or music appreciation. There will be um, a semester of health that's required by the state, and then they'll have another semester that's a different elective. So they'll be able to choose from the list of electives offered for seventh grade. Does it mean uh, the band will go because it's a year long? The, the band will go? No, band won't be eliminated. How is it going to fit? For 7th grade or for 8th grade? Th it'll still be available for 8th grade, okay. but in 7th grade it will be a semester for health and then they'll have the option for 7th grade electives from the list. Is that how we do it right now? Yes. Okay. Right. <coughs> Any other question? No? All right. Thank you for that information. We are now on item F6, and that's a report on the LCAP Educational Partners Meetings, number three and four. I am very excited to say that we fi finished our final and f our fourth and final LCAP Educational Partner Meeting earlier this week. So since the last time we were together, we've had two additional LCAP meetings. The second, um, the first of those two, we're our educational partners joined together to look at that goal analysis. How did we do as a district? Um, are there things we need to change within our LCAP plan? Are there things that we should add? Are there things that we should continue? Some of the big highlights that came from that day were that uh, educational partners shared that it was a positive that we were adding additional positions to support students. That's some of that class size reduction, intervention teachers, social workers, all of those pieces we've talked about before, counselors. Um, efforts to repair facilities were noted as a positive from the educational partners. There has been um, considerable effort made um, with the limited resources we do have. And then one of the big concerns of our educational partners is staffing and lack of being able to hire qualified people for both classified and certificated positions. And then the last um, area that they were focusing on was that security and supervision, which we've talked about at previous board meetings. As a result of uh, that coming up, we've created uh, action specifically for all of Pierce Middle School in the LCAP draft because that was where the area of concern um, was repeatedly mentioned. And so there's um, some actions and services that were put into the goal three. Um, positive and safe caring environments that are specific to OPMS as an ad. On Monday, the educational partners looked at the draft plan uh, in its entirety, 
all of the goals, all of the narratives, and provided any additional comments, suggestions, and additional recommendations. I can't tell you what those say yet, because that was just on Monday of this week, but we'll be pouring into that, um, finalizing anything that the educational partners have asked for us, and then we'll start meet and confer actually tomorrow with RTA and CSCA next week, I believe, and then we'll have the LCAP Community Forum later this month. May 24th was where we'll have um, all day, we'll have the LCAP draft available for community parents, educational partners who are on the committee to come in and review it with support from Ed Services. This is an information item. Question? Yes, set a question. So <clears throat> what happens if, like we have staffing it is a concern. So we put that on our LCAP plan and then because there's such a shortage for teachers in certain subject areas, we just never fill it. I mean, I guess I'm actually talking about something that's actually been happening. <laughs> <laughs> and so do we just, even though we're devel developing a new LCAP, are we um, moving that um, over to the new LCAP? If we don't complete one of our goals, we, we're moving it on, right? And then also, um, developing new goals, right? So we've had the same goals for the past few years because when the board worked to develop them in alignment with the district priorities, they were really broad goals. We've chosen that approach and then just to update those actions more frequently and really do an analysis of those actions each year. It's really hard to accomplish big action items in one year, and so it's usually something that we're looking at over a longer period of time. For example, when we're talking about staffing, something that you might see each year might be we'll research looking into signing bonuses for hard to fill positions. This was something that came up previous, right? Now we have those in the LCAP and we call out those specific subject areas where we have the signing bonuses for. Right, that was pretty creative using WASC as a tool of recruitment, but it seemed to work. I don't know. Yeah. <coughs> Very nice, thank you. Any other yeah. questions? Okay, then we will move on. Uh, item F7 is a report on updates to the Expanded Learning Opportunities Program Plan Guide. Governing Board, I am thrilled to bring back Amy Bradshaw to the meeting tonight to share about the Extended Learning Opportunities Plan, otherwise known as Thrive now. Uh, that we're building in Ramona Unified. You might remember that the board approved this program plan back in November. Right. We have made some changes to board policy since then, and we've had um, almost a full school year under the ELOP plan, and so updates are needed. We need to take a look at that plan and, and uh, make sure it's complying with board policy, and so Amy's here to share some of those um, successes of Thrive this year and some of the things that we need to change in that plan. Good evening, everybody. Um, so in front of you, you have a quick little flyer reference, a guide for you all to some of the changes that we have had to make to our program plan. And this is based on um, feedback that we've received and then implementation that we've made throughout the year and based on the needs of our program. So first and foremost, we had um, district updates. We had contact information that we had to update. We now have Dr. Thurman listed on the program plan. And then we also have included Ramona Elementary, which is transitioning from ACES and Aspire only to now they will be under the ELOP umbrella as well. And they will also still have the ACES funding. Um, along with that, we are we have been working very hard moving forward to a single comprehensive district-wide program which is something that is a big push from the um, county to get all of our programs incorporated into one expanded learning program for our district so currently um, our ELOP program is servicing 221 students and that is at those four sites at Barnett Hanson James Dukes and Mount Woodson <coughs> with um, a few RCMS students being bused over to Hanson. However, as we incorporate Ramona Elementary, we are actually going to be adding, um, I believe, 65 students. So we'll have 286 students for the elementary sites. And then inclusion of OPMS under the Thrive umbrella, um, that will bring us up quite a bit. And I think we'll be over 370 students once we have OPMS in there as well. Um, so we will be Thrive, the expanded learning programs of Ramona, or Ramona Unified School District. 
Um, that was one of our huge changes that we had, and with our new name, we had to go through and we had quite a bit of <laughs> updates to our language. So all of the ELOP name changes went to Thrive, and then we had to expand some of our options. Um, so instead of saying we will provide things, we added May, and um, expanded learning went to Thrive throughout as well. And then we added district adopted materials instead of so many specific um, opportunities for the academic resources. Our program updates, um, there was some clarification regarding snack and district wellness policies um, and some snack information in there saying that we would provide it after school, just specifying that. Along with our, um, our name change, we have a new program mission that we added to our statement. So we want to empower our students to be trustworthy, to make healthy choices, to be resilient, to have integrity, to use their voices and leadership, and to embrace empathy. And that is going to be very important for us moving forward, and that's how we're really going to unite all of those school sites. Um, we also had a revision to our continuous quality improvement process. I think there was something in there about um, monthly surveys or quarterly, biannually. We wanted to um, say that that would be continuous, that it won't be at a specific time throughout the year. We want to keep that open so that we can survey our families, all of our educational partners, our teachers, and everybody as often as we need to for that feedback. Um, we added some more specific funding allocation information, um, and we also included in there that once we meet the requirements for TK through sixth grade, if we have the opportunity to expand to all of Pierce Middle School to those seventh and eighth graders, we would like that opportunity. Um, we added information in there about our transitional kindergarten and how that will be incorporated. And then I also added a sample of the daily schedule and what an intersessional um, schedule would look like. So there were quite a few updates um, and there will be more as we continue to implement and get our structure and our foundation going and so we will just update as needed. That's what we have. All right. <clears throat> so this is listed as discussion possible action. Is there a recommended action for this? Yes, the recommendation is to approve the plan, which is behind the green sheet, okay. as presented. Okay. Questions? Um, I, just <coughs> I just had a question how because um, these are at specific sites. How um, did you go about working specifically with this site, with site administration and, and staff to build this program to enhance the school's program? I know that it cannot be what's taught in the classroom, but it can cer certainly enhance what is going on. I was just curious how you were doing that. Right, I work with the site administrators very often I talk to them somebody almost daily and so we're getting feedback to see what is going on in the classrooms the site uh, site leads at the schools they have all been asked to touch base with their teachers to talk to you know who's who's creating these the curriculum for the students and ask how they can support that and they're working directly with those students during homework time as well so they can see what's happening and they can just be a supplement to that a really fun you need to talk about yoga camps. Oh, Yoga Rascals? Yeah, Yoga Rascals, that's what it is. Yes, so we partnered with Yoga Rascals and they had an instructor come up. They have done four lessons so far. So they did three lessons at Barnett and James Dukes for their first round. They did one a week and it was for TK through third grade students. And then they did, they just started at Hanson and Mount Woodson on Tuesday. So they will have their three lessons as well. And their instructor was amazing. She has um, taught her class all through like a story for the students with their moves. And so the staff has enjoyed that just as much as the kiddos have. Oop. Um. Uh. <coughs> all right. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I do where it says um, student advisory group. I wonder what student advisory group is going to look like in that TK through six. All of the students have opportunities to give their input and feedback as well throughout 
the program planning. So they're all included. What activities would they like to see? Um, we reach out to the parents as well, and so we can get that feedback from their kiddos. I thought it meant some kind of a structured uh, advisory group. Uh, you know, just it, it might get there as our program progresses, where maybe the older students have an advisory group and they can um, be a part of that. We'll have to work our way to that. Item one says, um, among, among other things, culturally responsive uh, <coughs> environment. What, what's that? It is important for all students to be able to express their cultures, their diverse backgrounds, and to express themselves while they're there. And so um, just celebrating the different holidays and students for their individual cultures is going to be important for us. Similar to what we do in schools and in the classrooms right now. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if some language in item six might potentially drive parents from away from our district. For example, it says um, the program creates a welcoming environment, which is fine, but it also uh, celebrates diversity related to a number of things, including income level, sexual orientation, gender identity, identity expression. I wonder if uh, parents would object to celebrating income level in K through six and celebrating gender identity expression in K through six, orientation, K through six, physical ability. Uh, and also, um, we are already required not to discriminate based on those things, and it's already provided for in education code, in civil code, in Americans with Disabilities Act, if we're talking about access, but we're not required to celebrate all those things. Uh, so somebody may say, if parents don't like this, they don't have to put kids in this program. But it makes me think, what if um, it raises for the parents' right flag if this language is in this guide? What if it's easily also inserted in a number of our other policies, in our other guides and documents and some parents may look at this and just take their kid and run so uh, for example last uh, paragraph of item six repeats things that are said in number two um, so i would like maybe to propose to drop number six altogether because uh, can i can i whoop, yeah. can i add something that <coughs> According to the um, ELOP requirements, this has to be in there. We don't have a choice. That's why it's here. Okay. Yeah, I remember when it, when it was first brought up, um, all this stuff was explained to us, and um, I know this was commented about. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. it's, uh, can I ask a question, just Amy, just real quick? The plan was already approved in November, and then the changes mm -hmm. that are being made are the okay. ones where you see the strike through. Right. So what's already in this plan, um, anything that's not already stricken through was already board approved. Thank and you. and Mr. Dome is correct in that this program plan isn't something that we develop. It's something that there are very strict requirements um, by the state that come with the one point nine million dollars that we get to support the program each year. Which probably change <laughs> for right now <laughs> right right no I, I think um, the way you word it is good um, that it creates a welcoming environment and I mean I don't know how much better you can say that I think that's a good way of saying it so Thank everybody you. feels that um, what's the right word um, that they belong Did you have more, Maya? We celebrate different cultures and heritages. How do we pick which one? There are dozens and hundreds. What if we pick certain ones but not the others? Is someone going to say we're discriminating against the others we omitted? Then we can celebrate them. Yeah. Which ones? The ones that they're saying we're not celebrating. There are hundreds, like dozens. Yeah, and we can't celebrate them all. So I don't. I, I, I think it's counterproductive to say don't celebrate any if we can't hit them all. 
Uh, what is celebration of, uh, let's say, income levels going to look like? That's really getting into the weeds of staff's job instead of the, you know, we tell them the what, they do the how. Yeah, I, I, I see it as um, the key word here is that it's going to support um, that welcoming environment for kids. And if they're coming in and um, they have a certain background um, where they identify in a certain way, then the activities, the way I look at it is it's not that it's in, the, it's not hindering their ability to feel belonged. I think that's really the whole point of this is that we're trying to create an environment where, you know, they, they feel part of the um, Ramona family. That's what this is, no matter what they look like or who they are. I mean, I, I think that's the spirit of this. Um, however, I can understand how it could be concerning. But if we take the spirit of what it is, then I know our staff does that on a daily basis. So I feel good about that. So th there's a couple of things that, that I really am, am pleased that we're hearing tonight. And, and one of them is that we're constantly looking to expand this program. Mm -hmm. And we had a very in-depth discussion about a year ago um, where many in the community were, were worried if they were going to get a spot. Um, and we, we weren't sure if we were going to have enough spots for everybody. And it had nothing to do with, with seats in the room. It had to do with staff. Um, to to supervise these kids, um, so I'm really pleased to to hear that we are continuing to um, make positive uh, movement towards enrolling more students as they want to, as the the parents are interested. Because if I remember correctly, we did have to limit a little bit, um, just because we couldn't hire people fast enough. And we've talked about this at this board and and some of the actions that that staff has taken to try to address that. So um, I, I, I really like what I'm hearing, this program. It sounds like you're doing some wonderful things with it. Um, thank you so much for your hard work. Thank you staff to staff for continuing to prioritize the expansion of this program because there was a lot of people in this room with that worry. I think it was mm -hmm. probably our May meeting last mm -hmm. year. Yep. There was concern about that. <coughs> um, so what does it take to be able to expand to OP? We are incorporating them at this time under the Thrive program. And so to get those requirements met, we need to meet 50% um, of our unduplicated student population first this year. And then next year, we will have to be able to allow in any unduplicated student who would like to be in the program. Um, and basically, once we do that and we have staffing at those sites, then we can start incorporating OPMS into the um, ELOP funding. It'll supplement their ACES program. They would still have the ACES funds. Okay. So it's additional outside of just the academic. It's for um, more of the fun stuff, the recreational side of it. All right, Dan, did you have any questions or comments? Well, you recognize some discomfort. Myra verbalized it. I'm not comfortable either. I think it's a wonderful program. I think it's terrific. Except when it comes to this part about exploring students' cultural backgrounds, sexual orientation, and those kind of things. When did we replace geography with, with discussion of those topics? When did it become the school's duty and obligation to make students comfortable with all these topics? I don't know when that started. Where, where did it come from? Why is our school district in Ramona obligated to do this? So I would submit that we're probably not, then we just don't get the funding. Um, and w specific to geography, that's handled during the instructional day. Well, I, I use geography as 
as a sample of what schools ought to be doing, teaching geography, history, math, English literature, STEM. And we are. And we are. So why are we adding other things beyond the scope of traditional education? I think that... Why are we going there? I think that what Mr. Dome um, uh, um, was speaking about is actually the intent of this paragraph. There isn't a teaching. This isn't say we're teaching these things. It's, it's creating an environment that welcomes all is what the intent of that language is. Nowhere is it saying we're teaching that. We're just ensuring that we're providing opportunities. For example, when we talk about income levels, uh, I know one of the big ahas I had when I was in the classroom as a teacher was I had students who came to me that had never been to a play. That was a result of their income level because they didn't get to go to the theater, right? And so by providing opportunities that address things like that, we're celebrating, we're not um, teaching about this student's income level or this student's income level. We're kind of leveling that p playing field and, and celebrating everyone in a welcoming environment and providing opportunities for everyone to experience this culture and diversity that they might not have at home or in other places. And so that's kind of the intent. We're welcoming everybody. We're not being, um, we're being inclusive and we're providing opportunities for people to experience those types of things. We're not doing any teaching of that. If that yeah. helps clarify. Um, it does. And I, I've defined um, diversity, access, and equity more than once on this board. And that hasn't changed, I don't know, for 50 years. It's the same, it's the same thing. That has not changed. And so to give, uh, I think, um, comfort is that we're simply providing what kids need to be academically successful to all kids and so that that's the access but that's all make it's making it equitable because we're giving every kid what they need to be successful and not all kids need the same thing some kids need different things and then it's diverse because we're saying every kid is invited unfortunately we have to get the Unduplicated before we get all of the kids, <laughs> but that's the requirement of this. And so, I mean, I, I I've looked into it uh, quite a bit. I I get it, um, but I I can tell you this: it doesn't say that you're teaching it. What it says is that you're infusing this rich cultural experiences. And so, the only I I guess how you could say this is the staff is providing the experience, and the kids are the ones that are relating to it. So it provides this opportunity so that everyone can relate in their own way. And it might be that they identify, oh, this is part of my history. Or it might be somebody else has more of an appreciation. Oh, this is part of my friend's history. And I love this. So again, this is really about loving kids and providing that sense of belonging for them and not being punitive or critical towards a kid. They have no, I mean, especially at this age, they don't, you're, you're born the way you are. You don't necessarily have a choice on that. So you're born in the family that you're born in. Roger, I really appreciate your explanation. <clears throat> um, spot on. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I mean, I have, I, I understand what well you're saying because I have, I have concerns with the penal code and making things so broad to the point that um, it's hard to understand sometimes. I totally get that. That makes it really tough <laughs> because when anything goes, how do you actually understand how it works? because anything can anything can go so there's nothing there's no the, the rules don't actually necessarily work sometimes but that's not what this is saying it is referring to the penal code when it talks about how everybody is identified differently 
and it's it basically what it's saying <laughs> is it's like we want to make sure we include any, everybody. That's what this is saying. We just want to include everyone. And so by law, they're just taking that right out of the penal code, which is then added into ed code. That's what it is. Yeah. And Dylan's trying to get the screen to the page uh, that we're discussing. And you might just need to scroll. I don't know. Okay. All right. So um, page 41, we're looking at this plan and there seems to be some discomfort on the part of a, a couple of board members at least about some of the language that's on this section six, diversity, access, and equity. And I was wondering, I, I really don't love the idea of wordsmithing this document that's been presented when they just brought some fairly simple um, updates to it. But in order for the board to be comfortable and get a unanimous vote here, would it be possible to strike the one sentence that has been called out here, and that is, it celebrates divert, it's uh, the end of paragraph two, line two. It celebrates diversity related to participants, race, color, religion, sex, age, income level, national origin, physical ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender identity and expression. If we struck that sentence, we would still be covering all of the inclusivity that we're looking for without spelling out a couple of things here that board members have mentioned that they are not comfortable with. Would we meet whatever criteria we need legally with this program and the language of the plan if we struck that sentence? Yes, I believe so. Can I make a, a suggestion and just say that it recognizes instead of celebrates? Yes, or maybe we don't need to specify all of those things. I would it, prefer it does to in other, it, it mentions in many other places, right? Um, even in the very beginning, cultural and linguistic diversity, opportunities, diversity, across, diversity access, equity, moving down, we see um, backgrounds, disabilities, English learners, other barriers, heritage. I have a, I have a simpler way of doing this. Yes. We just simply say, um, it celebrates the diversity of all students. And that answers all of that, if you just say that. I like it. All students with... Um, the diversity of all students. So that's, that's all with inclusive. everything. Zero exceptions. Exactly. Right. It's all all inclusive. inclusive. I'll support that. Okay. And you can say, and all inclusive. That's good, too. So are we clear enough on the wording of that? Um, with that, do we have a motion to approve these updates to the guide? Darren? I, I'm okay with it in its current form. I see. So if I make a motion, it will be to support it in its current form. I would like to make a motion to uh, approve it with the changes suggested by our board president, which is uh, celebrates the burst of all students. Yes, period. Okay, do we have a second to that? Just clarification that all students means this whole list. Of course. Is that correct? Yeah. We're not excluding we're not, we're certain not, students. No, we're not listing every diverse right, opportunity. Right. We're yes. just... But the intent is to include all students. Of course. Including all the ones on the students. List. Okay. All and if students. I just want to all. make clarification. Yeah, if you, need, if, if you need to, just kind of like a board policy, you can I'm not sure that's necessary to, to uh, you know, mm, I don't want to say clutter the document, but right now this is something that parents can, it can read and understand without having to reference board policy, and I, I appreciate that. So we did have a motion from uh, Maya. Do we have a second? I, I can second it. I, I think it's fine either way. It doesn't Thank really you. Change the, it's really about the spirit of what this is trying to do. So to me, however you want to wordsmith it, as long as it captures that spirit and the kids feel a sense of belonging, then that's a good thing. So what I heard was uh, first from Maya with a second by Roger um, to just adjust that one line of this section six. And at this point, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. <sighs> Thank, Thank you, you team. <coughs> Thank you for a very nice presentation. Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. 
Uh, let me get caught up here. Okay. We are now on item F8, and that is approval of instructional materials for transitional kindergarten. Members of the board, we are excited to bring one of our newest ALT members, Susie O, coordinator of curriculum and, and technology, and TK teacher Paige Schwartz, forward to share about the transitional kindergarten program that we are building in Ramona Unified, and to make a recommendation of TK curriculum for board approval. Good evening. You're, you can just hold it for a minute. You'll be fine. <laughs> uh, we're not off to a great start. Okay. <laughs> well, good evening. Um, I am honored to have the opportunity to speak on Tools of the Mind curriculum. During the 22-23 school year, all transitional kindergarten classrooms at our elementary school sites piloted the Tools of the Mind curriculum. Tools of the Mind was selected for its fit to RUSD's rigorous instructional focus and its alignment to the desired results developmental profile, or DRDP. Tools of the Mind classrooms have been described as places where children love to learn, where children help each other, they follow the rules, there's creative flow, and make-believe play reigns. Teachers say that the class can even run itself as children know what to do and do it on their own. This is a result of how we teach, not about the what. <laughs> the approach to teaching and learning. So activities are intentionally planned to promote our vision of a community of learners. The core of Tools of the Mind is research that's based in Vygotsky's theory the theory states that children grow their cognitive skills when they engage in meaningful and challenging activities. Bogoski believed that learning happens in different stages. There's cognitive, motor, and social. Cognitive learning involves thinking about concepts and ideas. Motor learning involves doing things, and social learning involves interacting with others. Children learn through play. Learning is fundamentally social. It happens in social interactions with others. And self-regulation is a main developmental accomplishment of childhood. Tools of the Mind embeds this practice that leads to the creation of an inclusive, regulated community of learners. More than just developing self-regulation for an individual child, it's all about how the group interacts and how children support each other in helping them to be regulated. And when children are self-regulated, they independently know what to do, meaning they understand how to follow the rules, they can complete steps in activities. Children could even spontaneously help one another and they encourage each other. They jump in when a friend needs help. They solve play problems together. The path to a self-regulated classroom is through activities that focus on it, such as freeze game, or do what I do, make believe play. The classroom routines, uh, routines that are used um, are helpful, such as pretend play to help children stay focused. So teachers support children to do this by scaffolding their learning, meaning they can use or take away mediators. They might use proximity as a way, um, proximity to help regulate and scaffold. I should be moving my slides mm -hmm. along. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so all Tiki teachers have used this DRDP <clears throat> to assess students on the approach to learning self-regulation, social and emotional development, and physical development. The metrics that are used in DRDP to monitor development progress of students are aligned with activities that are in the tools of the mind. So where can we see this? We can see components of it in Share the News or Message of the Day, Make Believe Play, and Play Planning. As you can see, there's a huge focus on play. 
So Make Believe Play promotes executive functioning gains in preschool. And in fact, engagement in social pretend play predicts preschoolers' executive function gains across the school year. It engages children in pretend scenarios in small groups, and that's what it helps improve children's emotional self-control. Play leads to more mature play, and the more mature play is related to higher levels of self-regulation. We have seen that children as young as three are capable of cognitive and emotional self-regulation. In our journey, teachers have had opportunities to engage with a tools of the mind uh, trainer in this school year. So you can see that starting in November, we've had five full day uh, training workshops. In addition, on a monthly basis since January, our teachers have also engaged in what's called TREE, professional development which stands for Teachers Reaching Educational Excellence. So once a month, our teachers would gather um, and have the opportunity to share. <coughs> and before they do that, they would upload a video of one of these topics um, that we will be targeting for that month. And they will then get feedback from our trainer. So there's a personalized, uh, customized feedback from our trainer to our individual teachers. Then we would have the opportunity to share together as a group, and afterwards, teachers would either upload a post video after reflection um, or a reflective paragraph. Um, so this continuous personalized feedback allowed our teachers to be reflective practitioners to implement the curriculum with fidelity. The pilot process was a transparent process that happened throughout the school year at all elementary school sites. It allowed parents and community members to access the curriculum materials either online or in print here at the district office. A board presentation was given last October to provide background information and all school site councils had the opportunity to review the materials and provide feedback. So you can see some of the teacher feedback was that all TK teachers are supportive of this program for adoption. You can see the themes here are that they feel it is developmentally appropriate for this age and what they've um, seen this year has really worked. The strategies have really worked for their classrooms. Some of the school site council parent feedback has been that they are very supportive, again, because of the appropriate, uh, age-appropriate um, materials that are in this curriculum. Um, so Megan Vincent, who is a teacher at Hanson, is a TKK combo teacher who was not able to join us tonight, but wanted to share her feedback and thoughts on Tools of the Mind. that's happening, the volume, the, the, the level of talking that's happening in the classroom, and the uh, organic way in which uh, problems are solved, and uh, where they, they first start regulating each other so that then they can become self-regulated themselves. So you see here four pictures um, of our current, um, our current theme, which is the neighborhood. So we have the, um, the deli and the ice cream shop. We have our uh, post office, and you can see uh, the kids sorting mail. Um, some of the kids choose to write letters. Uh, they deliver it to different parts of our neighborhood, de deliver the mail. You can see we have um, home, so we've got the, the mamas 
their babies. And I would like to say that uh, a lot of my boys are in there every single day nurturing those babies. Uh, and, the, and the things that come out of their mouths is so very heartwarming. And then finally, we have our, our, um, our hospital there. Um, the capacity for make-believe play grows as they interact with each other, as they, um, they share their experiences at the doctor's office uh, via play. And our role as teachers, where in the beginning, we have to kind of step in behind and coach. OK, you're, you're, uh, you're going to say, welcome to our restaurant. Uh, would you like a booth or a table? And then we, we, we help we kind of help them along. Um, and eventually, they are not only doing the make-believe play themselves, but they're setting it up. And finally, the, the exciting part for me is they are taking ownership of all of the tools that we use, all of the props that they develop, um, and making sure that they're well taken care of, they're mindfully put away, so that the next time they're able to go out and, and, and have make-believe play, everything's there for them. So I invite you to come and, and have some joy with, with these TK kiddos. Uh, any part of the day, you will be amazed at, at what they're doing. <coughs> and true story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. So, board, do you have any questions about this? This is an action item with recommendation for approval of Tools of Mind. I make a motion to approve. I think this is a brilliant approach. I second. Brilliant is right. Best things since sliced bread. I'm just going to say. And to have Paige in here thinking that it's great, I trust her. <laughs> All right, very nice. So we do have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That carries unanimously. Thank you Thank very, you much, very for much for coming in and sharing with us tonight. All right, we are now in Section G, and it's Human Resources. Our first item to attend to is item G2, and that is approval of AB 1200 disclosure costs and the approval of tentative agreement between Ramona Unified School District and Ramona Teachers Association. President Perfect and members of the board, um, if I seem a little off my game, it could be the audience that's here tonight. A few distractions came in. Uh, there's a few distractions. I'm not sure if they're here to see if you're going to approve the increase for their current and former teachers <laughs> or to extend my contract. Right. Um, <laughs> nonetheless, I'm. For I'm, those I, that I, don't know, Tony's family came in and they're, yeah, they're lined they're up in the, in the room nope. tonight. <laughs> One of those, they've always wanted to see what their dad does. Right. This Thanks for it. coming in. Do you want to call them out and introduce yeah. them? Give a wave. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my wife, Christy. Thank you. Son, Jake, who's getting married a week from Saturday. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. To her? That no. Is, no, that's his oh. sister. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, who's home from college after a freshman. Derek, who's a sophomore in college, and Chase, a junior in high school. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Welcome, All and right. now you get to see your dad in action. That's right, as he gets through item G2. So with this, is we, as you know, we have concluded negotiations with our teachers union. Uh, this particular item is to approve the AB 1200 disclosure cost of that tentative agreement that we have come to with the Ramona Teachers Association. A summary of the details of the agreement are that it provides benefits for retiring teachers, a salary increase of 6%, an adjustment to placement of CTE teachers on the certificate of salary schedule, language related to kin care leave, adjustments to class size ratio, elimination of non-student contact rate, an adjustment to the extracurricular salary schedule, and the addition of stipends for re girls wrestling and uh, we are requesting <laughs> that the board uh, approve this tentative agreement with the Ramona Teachers Association. May I say that I have never heard it read better than that? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And so Thank you for that, saying that in front of the family. Right. I really appreciate it. Are you moving approval? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'll make a motion mm, for approval. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any questions? I want to add, it's nice to see separate uh, coaches for girls wrestling. It's very nice. Because uh, now they have an opportunity to have their own team and train separately, which I think for wrestling is very appropriate. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. Next up, item G3. <laughs> yes. A celebration. This uh, is in a... This is an asking for an approval of an MOU uh, with Ramona Teachers Association. As you, as you know, the, the well, teachers are paid t uh, 10 months out of the year. 
but with the uh, change in the school calendar, we've kind of crept more and more earlier into August, and so we're looking to make a change. Uh, instead of 10 monthly payments, there'll be 11 monthly payments, and teachers would be paid August through June, and their paychecks would be spread out during that. It's, we've been working with RTA, and we appreciate their patience as we've worked towards this MOU, and we're requesting approval so that we may continue to work with the county office to make this change. So just, so just question, you're going to have three options, 10, 11, and 12. It'll just no. be 11 month or 12 month. 11 or 12, yep. just the two. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. There's no financial impact to the district with this? There is not. I'll move approval with that. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right. Next we have... G4, approval of AB 1200 disclosure costs and approval of tentative agreement between RUSD and California School Employee Association and its Ramona Chapter 733. So similar to the agreement that we had with RTA, we were able to conclude our negotiations with CSEA and uh, their, the chapter as well as the, the governing uh, body of CSEA. The language that we have in the tentative agreement is related to kin care leave and the definition of a designated person. We have agreed to re-square the classified salary schedule, the calculation will be 5% with each increase step and 2.5 with each in, each increase range. This allows us to, to get a little bit of consistency throughout the salary schedule, something long um, the pursued. And we've also we revised, we will, the classified salary schedule will be retroactive to July 1st. Again, we're asking for approval. The AB 1200 uh, disclosure is there as well. Thank you. Any questions? Any motions? Move approval. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. <coughs> okay, item G5, and that is approval of AB 1200 disclosure costs and approval of management confidential salary schedule. So of our third employee groups is the management group, and we are requesting uh, that the board approve a 6% increase retroactive effective to July 1st, 2022 for management and confidential so, uh, employees uh, and we're requesting approval. Questions? Motions? I'll move approval. Thank I'll you. second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. Item G6, approval of amendments to the employment agreement between Ramona Unified School District and Melissa Satterley, Assistant Superintendent of Administrative Services. Members of the board, Mrs. Satterley has enjoyed her time as Assistant Superintendent <laughs> and uh, <laughs> is requesting that uh, we change the term and add an additional year to her contract. And there's also an increase to the salary as attached per the contract behind it. We're asking for your approval. Board members, any questions, any actions? I'll Thank you. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Congratulations. <coughs> Item G5, G7, approval of amendments to the employment agreement between Ramona Unified School District and Leslie Wilson, Assistant Superintendent of Education Services. Uh, similar, similar request to Mrs. Satterley to uh, amend the contract and add an additional year and an addition, increase in salary for Leslie Wilson. Has she also enjoyed her time here? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. A little too much. <laughs> A little too much. Well, I'll move questions. approval on this one. Thank you. I'll second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion carries unanimously. All right, and moving right along, item G8, and that is approval of amendments to the employment agreement between Ramona Unified School District and Tony Newman, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Members of the board, nobody likes to be left out, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm requesting to be included in the same approach with both other assistant superintendents. So are they here to look sad so we say yes? <laughs> it is It is a negotiating ploy. I, I don't see any tuition bills being waved in the air or anything. <laughs> right, right. Sorry, right. No pressure. Uh, okay. Any further discussion? Any action? May I make the motion to approve? Thank you. Second? I'll second. All right. Uh, all in favor? 
Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and well, it seemed easy and smooth here at the board table. It is because of all the work that you all have done in advance. And thank you very much for making this process as smooth on all of these as possible. Thank you for your support. Uh, can I jump Absolutely. in here for a second? Yes, some? please. Um, not only do I want to thank staff for, for their diligence and their hard work and their relationship building and making that sure, making that a priority with our, our uh, employees, I also want to thank our employees for their patience. I want to thank them for uh, recognizing that um, our budgetary process at the state level is uh, uh, timed horribly. We don't know how much we're going to have to negotiate, and technically we're going to start negotiating soon. And we won't know until next May what truly it, the, the budget looks like. So um, I appreciate the patience. I personally am very pleased to be able to um, offer uh, hard-earned and, and fair compensation mm -hmm. increases to our employees um, at all levels. So thanks very much, and, and thank you for your trust in our staff, and we look forward to continuing that relationship. Absolutely. Well said, Darren. All right, we are moving through to Section H, Administrative Services, and the next item for the board to address is H4, and that is approval of grants. Hello, Governing Board. I would just like to bring an approval of the acceptance of grants. One is from the California Department of Education for $165,000, and it's the California SUMS Initiative, Scaling Up Multi-Tiered Systems of Support. And this was for Ramona Community Campus. They received this grant to develop a site-wide multi-tiered system of support for all RCC students, families, and staff. The plan will require all training for all staff members as everyone on campus has an important role in developing strong, confident, resourceful, and prepared scholars. Once everyone has the same foundational knowledge, the team will develop a system of support with expectations for academic, social, and emotional success for all <coughs> students. The process will be data-driven, reflective, and collaborative over a two-year period. The other grant is from the county supervisor and this is the Neighborhood Reinvestment Program. We've had those a few times before. We are actually getting an additional $149,775, and this is going towards the Ramona High School scoreboard and visitor stands. And we did receive $50,000 um, previously, and that was uh, presented and approved at the November board meeting. And we are requesting um, an action to accept these grants. Just before we do that, what are we doing with hundred and almost $150,000 for scoreboard and visitor stands? We are currently so. looking into prices um, for, for the visitor stands right now and the scoreboards. So we're getting quotes and estimates on them right now. To replace them, repair them, add replace. additional... Okay. The, the priority is the visitor bleachers in right. the stadium. Are they falling apart? Yes. Okay. And the, 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 the scoreboard, we, we would look to spend this entire the entirety of the grant on bleachers. Okay, all right, thank you. I have a question about the uh, California SUMS initiative. Yep. Would it be possible to get um, some of the details from maybe a, a, a <coughs> Friday announcement, uh, Friday bulletin? <coughs> Just, I, I'm, I'm trusting, but I want to verify okay. that there are no strings attached, mm -hmm. and if so, what are they? Right. Mm -hmm. I can definitely do that. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. So uh, having said that, I'll, I'll move Thank approval. you. And do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much for working on these. All right, we are now moving to section I, district operations, and we have I-1, first reading of recommended changes to board policy number 6177 <laughs> regarding summer learning programs. Good evening, board. With the addition of funding from the Expanded Learning Opportunities Program, there is a need to update board policy to ensure it is up to date with the most current education code. Both the Cabinet and Manager of Expanded Learning Opportunities have reviewed the updates um, provided by the CSBA and are recommending this poli a policy to be approved as written. Okay, board, do we have any questions about this first reading? Do we have anyone ready to take action? I am. I'll move okay. approval. 
Thank you. Do we have a second? No one wants to second? I'll second it. Do we have any discussion about this? Everybody's quiet. Hopefully they've read it. All right, at this point I'll call it. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm an aye. I just, okay. I, I, I just, um, too late. That motion no. carries unanimously <laughs> and it doesn't feel free change, to make your it comments. It doesn't change anything. I'm just, um, just have some questions, but I don't think they're really questions for you guys. It's more questions about the state level. So. Okay. Because I, I feel like this is a moving target. They implemented a program that they don't really know what it is yet. And they're, uh, they just kind of threw money at, a, at an issue and they're allowing every single school district in the state of California to define what it actually is. And so we're actually all helping them to figure it out. That's, that's how I see it. And so that's really what my questions are. Like, what, what is it actually going to end up being in the end? Because I have a feeling they're, like everything, it's going to come down and they're going to be like, okay, we're going to make all these changes and here's what you're going to end up doing. <laughs> that's kind of what I see. Well, we accepted the ELAP fund monies on a similar, in a similar fashion. Well, that's what. Yeah, didn't know exactly is. what it looked like. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so. I don't know. I just ex I expect it to be uh, funded less. It's going to continue to get less funding, and then they'll define what it actually, what we're actually supposed to do, and then we're going to be like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of just what I. I don't know. Well, anyway. Let's make the most of what we have while we have it, right? Exactly. <coughs> okay. Next item is item I two, and that's Olive Pierce Middle School support recommendations. Thank you, President Perfect. Um, Members of the board, we've um, had lots of discussion around this. We're bringing this um, item as possible action tonight. We, uh, cabinet has spent significant time discussing challenges and, and plans moving forward. Um, I've heard from staff. I've been back to the campus a couple times, um, meeting with small groups uh, and, and a large group at one point as well of, of staff. So we have the following recommendations uh, one is the teacher on assignment so you heard tonight a little bit about that you've seen some of the uh, positive input heard heard about that anecdotally um, the recently hired TOA at OPMS has had a very positive impact in a very short amount of time uh, to date the district has received several comments from teachers and staff and parents regarding overall improvements in attitude and a reduction in the occurrence of conflict and incidents the district recommends adding the teacher on assignment position to the OPMS staff at the outset of the 23-24 school year. So that's one of the recommendations. The second one is a renewed focus on positive behavioral interventions and supports, otherwise known as PBS, an evidence-based tiered framework for supporting students' behavioral, academic, social, emotional, and mental health. Um, that is a uh, plan there's several um, kind of vendors that help with that um, choices is a program mending matters there's uh, creating a PBS behavior <laughs> matrix um, this whole idea of PBIS is something that the new principal has already been working on and brought um, a, a sample of a potential plan that the staff will see um, she's already um, provided showed that to me several weeks ago in, uh, in looking at improvement um, plans um, number three there is the Lifeline Telehealth Services. The, some of the options available for students are growing through adversities, life skills, seeking safety, decision making, anger management, grief and loss group, social skills, alcohol, tobacco, and other drug diversion. So this is a telehealth service that we have at the high school that is also <coughs> something that we can implement as well. Um, expansion of bar, as you heard, we had nine members of the OPMS staff at the National Bar Conference. Um, they attended that with Mrs. Benedetto and uh, made lots of plans and looking at ways that they're going to increase the bar program on campus, which increases connections of students to staff. Uh, we have the uh, camera use expansion. We have the additional server on order. That hasn't changed. The next one there um, should say vape sensors to be installed. They're not installed yet. We have one of those that have been ordered, but we don't have the rest yet. So as soon as we get those, they'll get in. And then I've confirmed that the sheriff uh, plans to continue their visits that they've done across our, all of our campuses, but um, with a, a specific focus with OPMS concerning, concerning the, the 
issues that we've had. Questions or comments? Yeah, so <clears throat> everything here we've already paid for. The only thing that's um, continuing or that's going to be an additional cost is the teacher on special assignment at OPMS no, for, the, for the next year, right? Thank you. Very good question. No, so um, I believe that um, OPMS has had, had four temp positions and that um, RHS had seven, five. And um, so what we did, um, Mr. Newman went to both principals to talk about using one of those temp positions as the TOA. So those are currently accounted for positions, full-time positions, even though they were temp. And so adding one of them as a, as a TOA takes away from the staffing piece of, a, of, an, of one of the FTEs that we've had previously. But it does not, it is a, the only increase is the 7% increase that TOAs receive. So, the, so this will be, right now, <coughs> is it a full FTE right now? It is, yes. And it'll be, continue to be a full FTE mm -hmm. for the next year? That's what we're recommending, yes. I just want to make sure I understood mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's a full FTE plus 7%. Okay. So that part is the cost. Okay. The 7%. I have a question about yes. uh, Lifeline, and mm -hmm. um, I guess it's not, <coughs> not to be answered tonight, but if possible, could we see it? <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> um, you described it as expanding it uh, to the middle school because it's already cr uh, present at the high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could we get some data on the use of of the lifeline telehealth services how many how many of our students have used it mm -hmm. is it mm -hmm. is it been worth the the cost of it mm -hmm. um, and do we have any follow-up data uh, just just justification for this move mm -hmm. I support it mm -hmm. but I am mm -hmm. interested in what it's doing for us at the high school and do we want to continue doing it in future years right right no absolutely we can look at that my understanding is the high school is also wanting to use it more have it be more prevalent and my understanding is that there's no cost is correct? <laughs> did you say no cost yes yes, okay. no cost, yes. thank you <laughs> that is correct and RHS just just started implementing it within the last like m month and a half I want to say so there won't be much data yet oh okay um but it is a free service. will data be available after it's been in use for absolutely okay great so remind me please what's the difference between teacher on assignment and security guard security stuff? great question I don't know if everyone can hear the question was that what's the difference between a security yeah. guard and a teacher on assignment um, so a security guard can identify things students are doing wrong and bring them to the office and um, then the administrators um, would need to deal with that, call the parents, handle those situations. Whereas a TOA um, is there, has relationships with students, they're gonna be in uh, going into classrooms and uh, they will be able to identify any types of issues, bring them to the office and deal with them. So the only difference is relationships, yeah? Yeah. So a security a person does not have relationships? Not as much as a teacher on assignment who already had, has established relationships. Teacher on assignment is, um, in the classroom during class. The security guard is not in class 100% of the time and supervise the grounds. Mm -hmm. But teacher on assignment is removed from their teaching assignment. So they're in the office, they're around the campus. The one we have right now I know is in rooms constantly <coughs> throughout the day, checking in on substitutes, a whole host of things that a, a security uh, type of personnel is not able to do. The teacher on assignment salary is um, would allow for how many security guards? Two, three, one. Mm, it, well, it would be the seven percent because, like we said, we're it's going to be a, a, an assignment taken from their already uh, existing temporary positions that they have. So it would be the seven percent, and yes, it could be more. But again, uh, uh, we could have ten security guards there that walk around to find what kids are doing wrong and bring them to the office. But then you've got a number of students waiting for administrators to see them and to handle all of that while the security guards are out finding more things students are doing wrong, rather than having relationships, working through issues before they may even become an issue that needs to be brought to the office. But it's a resolution process that starts relationally rather than just a katcha and come with me and move in that direction. So what I heard from parents was problem of supervision. I think the security guards provide supervision. Mm -hmm. so what, what did you say about 7%? What are you talking uh, about? Teacher on assignment gets their current salary mm -hmm. plus a 7% stipend for that work. Can you ballpark that's what that number looks like? That's not it's a little meant. different depending on yeah. the mm -hmm. teacher, 7%. So I said ballpark it. Yeah, I don't know. What, 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 yeah. 
about seven thousand. On top of a teacher's salary of eighty. Uh, how, how much? Guessing Approx 7, approximately, 7, right? Um, how much is security card? Sixteen an hour. Sixteen <coughs> an hour. So Fifteen something. So one teacher on assignment is equivalent of two security guards. Okay. Or three. Or three. Mm -hmm. Do you still think um, teacher if on assignment is more efficient use of funds? We believe so. Okay. And the fact is that we're having trouble hiring um, campus security officers as well. I wish we could offer, we could offer more money for all of peers' mm -hmm. security. I have a question. Last month we discussed the cost of having a sheriff unit mm -hmm. on site five days a week and it was quite expensive. Is there a cost associated with these continuous sheriff visits or are they just kind of uh, uh, on, on patrol? Yeah, no, yeah, there's no cost. Uh, Lieutenant Vangler has asked them to incorporate um, visits into their regular patrolling um, to have weekly visits. That may be stopping just in the parking lot, it may be coming on campus. Um, he is very open since my first week here about bringing his, his team on our campuses and he has um, significantly increased that across the district this year, working with principals to, to come on campuses, but um, specifically with OPMS, he's made an effort to um, come uh, both himself and his, his team to be, a, um, to be visible. Thank you. Are we going to be presented with a revised some kind of cell phone policy because that's what I hear from parents all the time. They think uh, cell phones need to be addressed and we were even given some samples from uh, the Poway district. So uh, and I did ask if maybe I could uh, go to Olive Pier, no, Olive Pier, uh, Poway, Twin Peaks, yeah. But I was told that it's maybe staff will research and present us with cell phone policy or I don't mind doing it if somebody needs to do it. Yes, so yes, that is absolutely a concern that needs to be addressed, and I know that Ms. Benedetto is aware of that concern, so that will be something that we'll be working through before school starts. Um, but yes, we can get you the plan from the, the, um, the Twin Peaks Middle I, I School. I have I think that. We have I that. I'm wondering, we can have we have that. it in June, revised cell phone policy? What's that? Can we have it in June for our um, board meeting? Ms. Benedetto doesn't start until after June, so we have the principal be very involved in that process. So we won't. We can give you the Twin Peaks. Did you say you wanted to see the Twin Peaks plan? No, I'm oh, okay. just wondering That's to talk to them and see how it works for them, and if they're able, able to enforce it, mm -hmm. or maybe to talk to some uh, all of peers teachers and see if that uh, policy may be uh, worked uh, with and revised mm -hmm. and adjusted for our district mm -hmm. for all of peers and mm -hmm. what they would like to see added, for example. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what the principal will be working on. So we need to wait. For, so principal starts working when in July. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Can we have it in August? Though? I would think so. Does so, Dr. Thurman, is that a, an administrative policy to be handled by staff, or is that something that would come back to this board? Because I think that's probably an administrative policy that staff should implement, mm -hmm. and and I would love to see it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't think it's something that we vote on. I think mm -hmm. it, that's something that we ask staff to handle. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Because it's not a board policy. Right. It's right. Not? Just to give no. you a little bit of insight, so it does work at the middle school, but then there's no policy at the high school. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So they go from the middle school to the high school, it, it, and, it, and it falls apart. So mm -hmm. whatever we do, it, it needs to be coordinated between the two schools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a great point, Mr. Bill. Yes. I'd also like to comment on the, on the teacher on assignment. Um, I think one of the things that, that we're benefiting from right now is an experienced educator who's been in classrooms who um, has learned the tricks of the trade and um, there's real value in 20 years or 30 years of education and and um, making mistakes and learning from those mistakes <laughs> and and seeing new ways that that students um, come up with to work the system and they're they're connected. Our teachers are connected at that level. I'm not sure that we're going to get that out of a out of a sixteen dollar or sixteen dollar an hour security guard, mm -hmm. because we're going to get what we pay for. Mm -hmm. Okay, just sit here and watch them. And if they fight or if they do this, um, send them to the office. Right. Um, 
some of the, some of the reports that we've received about our current teacher on assignment um, are incredibly positive and engaging. Um, parents emailing us saying, I wanted communication from the school, and guess what I got? Communication from the school. Mm -hmm. um, really, really positive, needle-moving action. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I really like to hear what, what I, I love hearing what we're hearing about the positive um, behavior changes going on there. Mm -hmm. So I completely support a teacher on assignment if that's what we're getting out of it. And so far, we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is the difference between a campus uh, <laughs> safety officer and and the TOA in this position that the TOA would then um, communicate with parents and a campus safety officer would not? Is that a key difference? Yep. Okay. And because I'm hearing that there's a backup, right? Maybe something happens on campus and the student's called into the office, but that that piece of an administrator communicating with the student, all the students involved, the campus safety officer, and then the parents is a very time consuming process. Is that <coughs> The accurate? campus safety officer is, officer is not as involved as a TOA is gonna be, just for the right. obvious reasons of mm -hmm. they're, they're a teacher there, they have a relationship with the student. So um, CSOs can be excellent, uh, don't get us wrong. We have some that are very connected to students and families and, and that magic, if you will, happens. And I, I've seen it in, firsthand so that relation part relationship part is is key but very rare is a, a CSO able to establish that that's what I was wondering about because I hear great things about CSO and uh, Ramona community campus for example great things about security officer at uh, the high school mark for example he's great relationships with two students so I understand it's an exception we shouldn't expect this happening in OPMS then they have those kinds of relationships because it's rare as I see yeah Okay. It is rare. Yes. And if my understanding is correct, our, our teacher on assignment starts the administrative process um, when that, that, that student is taken to the office. And I say administrative process, I probably should be saying discipline process. Um, and, and it gets started <coughs> allowing the vice principal to do what we need that vice principal to be doing, following other um, more significant um, issues and calling other parents about instructional issues mm -hmm. and it allows our site administrator to um, attend meetings at the district that attend meetings with you um, do their job mm -hmm. uh, more efficiently and and freeing up more time to do so mm -hmm. yes and many times those discipline issues are resolved with a phone call from the toa who may know the parents already and just because i've met with him called him several times about i heard this today tell me about how you're doing how you're handling this and it's phone calls communication sometimes it's the third or fourth call to a parent about I've been trying to warn you about this it's getting more serious we need your help um, and so um, lots of amazing results there with that connection piece with the families mm -hmm, mm -hmm. speaking of the sheriff Dan mentioned the sheriff so it occurred to me was uh, reading about a sheriff in Florida who was saying, we don't hold our juveniles accountable, so we need to stop minimizing their actions and hold them accountable. And it's great that all the measures were taken, some of them are free, some of them cost money, but there's one measure, for example, that um, is free, and um, the article from the Sentinel comes to mind. And the article quoted our superintendent who was saying that um, safety is a community effort and we're seeking your help. So I wonder if um, the parents of the middle school victims filed criminal charges with the police against their children's attackers for gravated assault and battery with bodily injury, if that would have stopped for the attacks early on. And uh, there's a, if there's a group engaged in luring a victim for beating elsewhere, that would be a conspiracy to commit a crime. So the parents have the power to file charges, they have the power to do it. And that would probably constitute the community's help. Um, all those videos circulating online, giving the attackers attention, notoriety, they're seeking, then it will become evidence in the criminal investigation. It will no longer be fun and games. And the bystanders and spectators will become witnesses in the criminal investigation. I wonder if that would eliminate the incentive for fighting. And that, because videos taken are component of that if not the main one and if the attackers are arrested even released right away and if they are booked 
fingerprinted, uh, get a mug shot, <coughs> if we to make an impression on them and deter them from any further attacks on their peers. And after that, they will no longer to look cruel to their uh, friends. That would be a real consequence that, uh, consequence that uh, the sheriff in Florida was talking about. That would be holding the attackers accountable and not minimizing their actions by a figurative slap on the wrist. The article in the Sentinel was saying that the kids aren't scared of the being suspended or expelled, which is the only punishment for fighting that's available to schools right now. I spoke about this with the San Diego County Sheriff, Kelly Martinez, and I spoke with one of our Ramona detectives. And what I got from both of them was, yes, they would investigate and prosecute the attacks reported to them. And also the recommendation was to suspend all the spectators as well for five days. No spectators, no fights. In the video of the fight uh, that I watched, nobody from dozens of bystanders interfered to defend the victim. Nobody hum had human decency to stand between the evil and innocent, which was shocking. But uh, also what I noticed, the victim could have put off her attacker if she was trained in <coughs> self-defense. Uh, it would be... Uh, I wonder if one of the things we could do as a district to offer self-defense training in our middle and high school, it would be a real valuable, valuable life skill that would serve the kids for the rest of their lives. And teach, uh, uh, self-defense teaches how to stop the attack in three moves, quickly and efficiently. And to, to be a deterrent against any future attacks, as those kids will no longer be defenseless, easy targets. As uh, I remember, law enforcement always says that perpetrators attack is a target. And I'm not talking about revenge attacks some days later, no. So I would like to ask if we maybe can establish an after-school self-defense club or incorporate teaching of those skills in the PE class. Uh, I know that Krav Maga is uh, the most practical martial art because it combines the best self-defense techniques from Aikido, Judo, Karate, Boxing and Wrestling. And I know there's an, an Invictus Krav Maga studio in Poway, for example, that has um, half a dozen of instructors. Maybe one of them could be invited to teach as a club um, in the middle school or high school on a step stipend basis. That would all contribute to accomplishing our LCAP goal number five. Students, which says students will be educated in school facilities that are safe, clean, and so forth, but safe. Yeah. It will also teach the students to rely on themselves and stand up for themselves. Be besides everything we do as a district, we can teach them really valuable life skill like this. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? All right, so this is discussion, possible action. So the action would be to um, support implementation of these recommendations. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. I, I move approval as it's written. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Maya, did you register a vote? No, we didn't. All opposed? Are you abstaining? I'd like just to see a couple of more things added as cell phone policy, maybe over at the self defense club as well, middle school. So I don't know if I support all this, but I would like to see more. Um, how do I convey that um, I would like more things to be added to this? Can we um, give direction to um, Dr. Thurman to look into a cell phone policy? It just, just to keep our meeting orderly, um, the motion is to approve this list. <clears throat> and I did get four votes in favor of that. Can you register a vote one way or the I'll other? I'll we support, yes. Yes, yes, okay. All right, that motion carries unanimously, 5 vote. And did you want to add anything for a future topic or a board report? Uh, yeah, well, would you really like to have a board, I don't know, you said it's not a board policy, but we have some kind of cell phone policy that is a board policy. We do for the board. For the board? Yeah. Um, I have to look. With recommendations. So but this is this is an administrative policy okay. policy that 
that in my opinion comes under the purview of staff. Um, we give direction to staff to say, hey, okay. go take care of this issue. <laughs> and, and he's listening very intently. But we yeah. could certainly have uh, information go to the board on our progress with the cell phone policy at all of Pearson Middle School. Um, you know, what I would say about this too is that it's not necessarily a one size fits all. It's a, maybe a site by site situation and the site administrator should, since we have someone new, should weigh in heavily on the development of what that policy would be. Just that a, I hear that uh, that's what um, mm -hmm. parents are concerned with and I would like to see that happen. Right. I don't know that would involve or vote policy or not or something else. So Brian, can you make sure that once Mrs. Benedetto gets started that uh, cell, cell phone policy, whatever uh, she decides is appropriate for her school site to start out, that the board gets that information. It's not a board action item, but we're definitely interested in seeing to it that we handle this situation with cell phones on campus. Well, not that we do, but that the staff on site does, because as we've seen, it, it's a problem. Yes. Yeah. We're, it's not that we're just leaving the phones to the wind or to, to the current um, abusive way they're, they're used, but um, we do ask that the site administrator with their staff be very involved in that. Process. And specifically, parents are asking uh, to remove cell phones from uh, both uh, some from the use are from the use on campus. Some oh. parents are asking. So, and also, I'd like to see uh, some self-defense skills being taught because if the victim is able to defend themselves, they will not be attacked. If they meet the attack with an equal or greater force or skill. Yes, and I, I think um, we'd mentioned this before when they're responding in a in a, a what some view as self defense, but they're hurting someone else. They still are, are subject to the same consequences as an aggressor in hurting someone. So it's uh, a fine line. I've, I've used um, had self defense classes taught at a school elementary age actually because it's very good discipline and and um, physical fitness type of, of disciplines. We didn't weren't doing it so they prepare to hurt someone, but it is something that um, would be um, excellent because flexibility and strength and all the things that it comes with so it's something that we can definitely talk to Miss Benedetto about but um, I would not be comfortable with us viewing that as a solution to students who are um, hurting others we there are six there seventh and eighth graders and so we're approaching this from a relational standpoint and connecting with students and and not from the strict policing um, view it's a little bit it could be a different approach just have a hard time imagining a student allowing themselves to be beaten up in order not to hurt the other one, so they should allow to hurt themselves. Yeah, and that's not defending themselves. Defending themselves is removing themselves from the situation. If they are attacked, like, not everyone can remove themselves. But I think the, I think the goal is to, to get prevent the attack. Right, right, to not have I think the goal is to prevent the attack. attack. Exactly. And, and, and treat it as a... Um, holistic situation instead of just a punitive combative situation where one kid fights the other kid fights back and but they both go to jail it's I not we're trying to avoid that it's not fighting self-defense teaches how to end it quickly in three moves that's it so it's there done. is a fight involved self-defense is not fighting. there's an attack though right but and we don't want it to go to that point we'd like students to resolve their issues without physical violence I have a comment Q. I have a comment Maya brings up this sheriff in Florida who recommends that under these circumstances, in junior high school and high school, when, when a student attacks another student, assaults them. Um, from my perspective in the field for a long time, it doesn't take much to cause serious head injuries, concussion, maybe a bleed. It doesn't take a lot. And these kids, as junior high school students and high school students, are physically capable of inflicting that kind of damage. Here's my thought. If we let it be known in this community that the school board supports the arrest and prosecution of students who attack other students as a policy, that we support as a school board and we let that be communicated through staff, through teachers, through parents, through the media, wouldn't that act as a deterrent 
and give someone a second thought about, hey, I'm beating this guy up at 3 o'clock, come and film it. Just Ed, it doesn't have to be a board policy or even a board recommendation for parents to be able to do that. Today, if a student in first grade hurts another student or in seventh grade or in twelfth grade, the parents have the ability to go to the police department and file a police report. True. The challenge comes, and I've had dozens of these over the years, <coughs> is when it gets right down to pressing charges, 99% mm -hmm. of the time, the family does not. And that's just the, it's just, um, the fact regarding the, the situation. True. I don't know about our recent ones, if they, if they did press charges, but the police do their thing outside of the school process. As a school, when someone hurts someone, we have procedures that, that we do that include suspension and up to expulsion, but we're also required to provide interventions for those things. So it's not just uh, we've mentioned zero tolerance bef before where someone does something and they're gone. It's not quite that simple. Yeah. Um, there's an intervention uh, requirement that we have to do. But Dan, um, <coughs> sometimes parents and community members talk to board members outside of board meetings. And that's an opportunity to mention that the sheriff is there to handle these situations and that when parents have a situation that arises that that would be a, a way to proceed. I don't know that it would be a board policy to encourage that. It's the law. And it's okay for parents to know that that's, that's enforcing the law. Well, I'm not, I'm not suggesting something that is new. Right. I'm suggesting a, another level of deterrent supported by the school board, communicated to everybody all the participants, and let parents know that this school board supports you filing charges and, and following, th you know, following through with the prosecution. Because, because mm -hmm. it's not, we're not going to tolerate this. And we have to s take a stand. And what's the harm of another level of deterrent? Brian, is there a, a point at which the school contacts law enforcement when there's a physical altercation between students? Times. What is that threshold? Uh, well, it's different from my experience. It's a gang-related issue, the severity of the issue. Um, it, there could be a student that has a, a prior history with law enforcement in some way, but we aren't reaching out to law enforcement as a right. discipline process to take the place of the school discipline procedures. If, uh, there's a fight looks to me like aggravated assault with bodily injury. And it's in the adult world, it's a crime. And that kind of fight happens on school grounds. The school doesn't see it as a crime. It doesn't call the police to prosecute the offenders. It's up to the parents. I know parents can go after and the it's attackers, their duty. but not the school. It's, it's the parents' duty yeah, to, parents. To, to take care of that. But Do school we just watches it, okay, there's a fight, there's a kid beaten up, there's a criminal crime has happened, but we'll wait until parents file charges. Do we wanna do we wanna call nine one one and have the sheriff respond when two guys get in a scuffle underneath the basketball hoop? If you see it on the street, for example, adults do I'm sorry? If you see it on the street, adults file charges. <laughs> but two guys getting in a scuffle underneath a basketball hoop in seventh grade. Do we want to call the sheriff? That's not our rule. So are you saying call the sheriff on everything? No. I'm saying as a school board, take a stand in support of parents prosecuting in the event that their student gets beat up by another student. A and I support that, letting the parents that's what I'm, that's all I'm that's saying. That's their duty, absolutely. You know, we might start a trend. Hey, the Ramona Unified School District is not putting up with this. And that school board has set an example of encouraging parents to prosecute in the event of an assault. Well, the parents don't make the decision to prosecute or not prosecute. The, it goes through law enforcement, and then it goes through law enforcement action. I can tell you. 99% of these, the district attorney will never issue charges on. If the parents press charges, the parents don't decide report, to press right. charges. They don't get to make the action and say, yes, darn it, I'm pressing charges. They say, I'm calling law enforcement. Law enforcement does an investigation. 
they decide if they want to forward this to the DA for charges, then the district attorney makes the decision whether or not they're going to file charges. Okay, I believe, I believe that in that scenario, the parents will be asked, do you want to press charges? Do you support it? Yeah, but it, that's not their decision. Okay, I, you can sit there and demand it all day long. And the sheriff goes, there's just not enough crime here. There's, the DA okay, will never okay. issue on this. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if a child is beaten up and the parent wants to press charges, that's all, that's all, that I'm, that's all I'm supporting. And I support it too. 100%. Okay, now, if the DA decides not to press charges or the sheriff's officer decides not to take the kid to juvenile hall, then that's, that's in the legal side of it. But as far as our side of it goes, we ought to support the enforcement of the law. I, I support the entire community doing that. Right. Okay. Well, I'd like to add the school board to that list. That's all I'm suggesting. I, I, don't, I don't have an opposition to it. I don't know if it's gonna move the needle. I think what's gonna move the needle is positive interactions um, in our schools. I think what's going to move the needle is knowing that, that um, I don't want Mr. Hall to come visit me because I got into a scuffle underneath this. Okay. Underneath and I know he's going to call my mom or dad right at work um, and let them know what I and, just and did. Don, that's, and what, yeah. that's where we're seeing change right there is, is Mr. Hall walking those, those hallways. And the, and the follow through. Right, and the yes. follow through that we've had a hard time accomplishing with our yeah. current staff I, I situation. I don't disagree with you. I, I'll support okay. it, but this is what's moving the needle. What, what I'm talking about is after Mr. Hall and all of our other uh, uh, efforts at preventing this have failed, and a student has a concussion and is taken to a trauma center, okay, I think we need to take a stand as a deterrent, as a school board. And, and all, those, all those peripheral issues, does the sheriff prosecute, does the sheriff handcuff, does, you know, all those things, out of our hands. What is in our hands is the opportunity to take a stand and say that we support parents prosecuting attackers of their children. And, and I, I agree with you 100%. Cool. I don't think a seventh grader is going to, is going to, that's going to have any deterrent on a seventh grader. I think what's going to have a deterrent is, is Mr. Hall going to call my mom or my dad or my uncle or my cousin or my grandparents, whoever I live with. They, um, they don't understand what it means to be prosecuted, but they do understand what it means to get in trouble by their parents. Just hate to see concussions, broken bones, because there's some real learning loss. Your parents take kids out of the district altogether. And what law enforcement is saying that uh, no consequences create more of the same thing. And I see appropriate consequences as law enforcement sees fit for those kinds of bodily injury, which is concussion, broken bones is bodily injury. There is an um, article in the criminal court for that. I don't see why the parents wouldn't um, wouldn't um, want to see the child's uh, attacker punished in the way. And I also don't see how being fingerprinted in the police department, getting a mug shot, not make an impression. The same way, maybe, or more or less, similar way as Mr. Hall calling the parents. Police interaction also, I think, makes a deep impress impression in, on the seventh grader, eighth grader. The sheriff brought up the term slap on the wrist, the Florida sheriff. And uh, I don't know, I, I think we're in the realm of slap on the wrist. We need to get out of it. If we're going to stop this from happening, take a stand. I, I think we have. I think we've made some positive action, and um, I think we're showing some significant positive results um, based on what was released recently. And I liked, I liked the program. 
that the superintendent put together. I think it's great. I would just like to add another step. Well, I don't think there's any problem with communicating to parents the intentions of Ramona Unified School District with certain behaviors. I'm sure that's already done. Don't we have a uh, discipline rollout where all the students learn to discipline? In the beginning of the year, that's school site plans, right. discipline plans, handbook that goes out. We have a district-wide handbook that discusses that. Yeah, I would ask or recommend that we look at what's the most recent history since the April 17th board meeting, and um, there's been significant improvement. That's the feedback that we're getting, and we have an um, uh, administrator with a plan coming in and with already creating those connections, and um, that we look at what's right before us before we get to extreme. Um, you know, I, I have seen one one student in K-12 be arrested and photographed and booked, but it was a student with serial gang shooting issues that um, was wow. caught and was booked because similar to what Mr. Drum was saying, it takes a lot to get to that point. They, I don't know that they would ever do that with a, a junior high student period before they would require us to do interventions and they, the, the law enforcement has other inventions, uh, interventions that they do for students before they get a mugshot and, and get both used. And maybe Florida's different, but just talking about um, at least the local areas and law enforcement that I've worked with in the past. Mm. Well, I, I wouldn't consider I thought we were encouraging. You said at the end of the year, there is a presentation made to the student body about accountability? The new principal is planning some events like that, yes. But we do have a, a parent handbook that goes out that district-wide that has some of those expectations. Good. Thank you. Okay. We are now on item I-3, and that's superintendent's report. All right. Good evening, trustees, staff, members of the public, those joining us online. Um, tonight, as we're aware, there's only 19 days remaining of the school year. Um, just find myself reflecting on our past meetings and interactions, visits, uh, just relationship building, all the things that have been going on. And um, tonight, just in the last 24 hours, um, as I was thinking about what to say tonight, and um, the last 24 hours I've been at, in, all over sites, the cross <coughs> games, um, you know, all kinds of things. And it just, everywhere I've been, really um, seeing some significant groups of people supporting our students just epitomizes, I think, what Ramona Unified is all about. And I just wanted to highlight some of those groups. I won't take a lot of time. I know it's late. But um, our girls lacrosse team last night um, did an amazing job. They lost by a couple of points, but they didn't have a single substitute person. We have a small team. The other team had about 15 substitutes. And uh, they just played their hearts out. And I got there a little bit late, <coughs> but um, just found myself screaming, just like I used to at my dad, at my, at my boys' games. Um, I was a little embarrassed. I didn't know if anyone saw me there, but uh, <laughs> I had to remember that I had to sit down and be calm. Um, but they just played amazingly. If I could bring them all up here right now, I would. They just um, really played with so much heart and determination, did not give up. Um, had to play the whole game both ways. It was their determination was amazing. Um, I came, I went to the game from um, the open houses at James Dukes and Hanson and just was so impressed throughout the night. Um, I learned to crochet at um, <laughs> Hanson. Um, Linda took a video of me. I did not realize that at the time, speaking <laughs> of on being on video. Um, but just the excitement in the kids' faces, the parents that pulled me aside, sometimes in tears, talking about their teacher and just wanted me to know how much their teacher meant to them and to their child it was um, just a, a wonderful night to be able to reflect on that and um, I want to mention our classified staff too going around and also hearing from teachers say let me show you the worst leak I've ever had in here and it's yeah. not leaking now <laughs> you know this was a problem and and it's been addressed um, our grounds looked looked great we've had uh, we've had a big help from North <laughs> Coast but our classified staff with our limited resources at times is goes absolutely above and beyond in, in so many ways, and I could go down a, a long list on that. Um, and just in summary, I need to highlight these three individuals here. 
Each of their departments have had some very significant things, I would say, in the last six weeks that's required just an unimaginable amount of work from them. And I mean six and seven days a week, um, very long hours, um, things that I haven't had to work through before, um, and they are absolute experts in their fields and so dedicated. I know it impacts their families, and I, I am so grateful for their time. Um, their work significantly contributes to what happens daily in the district. Um, and I really need to include Karina in this group as well because I think it was, um, I think it was last night that she <laughs> was here still at 9 o'clock, 8.30 or 9, helping to block off some of the stuff in the parking lot and trying to lock our front doors because our custodian <laughs> wasn't here. And uh, I had learned how to do it, but I hadn't showed her. And I, I just am so grateful for people's, everybody's commitment to our students and our community, and I get to see it and feel it every day, and um, I wish I could communicate that better for everyone else to um, have that experience and to see those things that I get to see, and I just feel so privileged and I'm so grateful for the contract piece. And, uh, we just have <coughs> Thank you. All right, Dan, anything? Yeah, I got something. Okay. We're a school board, and as such, we're related to other school boards in the county. We're all kind of intermingled. And something very disturbing happened uh, here this week. The San Diego School Board took a vote. In public, no. They took a vote in private to allow illegal aliens, non-American citizens, to vote in school board elections. That's very disturbing to me. And as, as a member a, of a school board, and we're all related, I, uh, I find that very, very disturbing. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> trying to recover from the shock of what I just heard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, want to say that I'm grateful that we keep hiring great people. Like we met some new uh, people today, and we introduced, and every time we seem to be hiring more and more. And it seems like we have this great wave coming. Great people since a year ago, at least, and it just keeps coming. And just every time it's great, another great person. Makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. But uh, this uh, recent schedule was also full of with events that I attended as well. For example, I attended several fundraisers, ROTC and uh, band, DFW, um, MVA past fundraiser. Also was able to um, watch the last track meet of the season. Um, and I was able to see our star athlete Josiah Torre in action. Never seen him compete before. When I saw, I didn't want to miss that his last meet. It was great. Uh, I was also able to attend uh, the artist reception at the San Diego City College um, and celebrate our students, artists that um, were able to get uh, their artwork exhibited among all uh, the San Diego students artwork. Also had great conversations at the exhibit um, of student artwork and flora floral arrangements at uh, the To Create Gallery. We had some great uh, conversations there. Uh, there are so many things on the schedule. I'm just trying to pick uh, <coughs> which ones I'm able to attend. For example, I will always attend all events at um, my our campus, as I call it, where I spent 16 years with my family, with my kids. So I went to the Ramona Community Montessori Children's Night last week, I think. And on Tuesday, I did go to the Olive Pierce Middle School Camp Pierce for parents for the incoming seventh graders. And I learned a lot. And I was glad to see all the teachers again and talk to some teachers. And I had those, uh, for example, self policy in mind. And I was talking to teachers about that and what they would welcome, what kind of things happen or not. You know, 
about the electives and everything else. So yeah, a lot of information this month, a lot of events. Very good. It is a, it is a busy time of year. Yes. Darren. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I'd like to start out with congratulations to all of our retirees that we recognize tonight. Um, I, I wish you the best in retirement, and I really want to thank you for your service to our our community and the, and the children in our community. Um, we were also recognized uh, teachers and uh, teachers of the year and classified employees of the year. These are the best of the best, but boy, we have a lot of them, and I don't envy staff's um, uh, process that they had to use to select um, who was the classified employee of the year or the teacher of the year. I can tell you, um, um, if, if, if you know, we selected Katie Scahan, and she had some really stiff competition, people that I know, right. um, and I hear wonderful things about and have heard wonder thi wonderful things about for years and years, so I can't help but think how good she really is um, to, to beat out some of the, some of the uh, teachers that she beat out. So uh, congratulations to her. I look forward to seeing her um, carry this through and represent Ramona. Um, at, at the county level. Um, I want to touch on a little bit of, of something that you touched on, Brian, and forgive me if I'm stealing your thunder for a future meeting or whatever, but <clears throat> we had uh, a local church, North Coast Church here in, in Ramona, um, put on an event, called, an event called Serve Your City. And they brought out um, a true workforce to our high school. And not only did they bring a workforce, they brought trucks and tractors and um, trucks full of concrete and people to lay that concrete. And they built walls, they planted trees, and they did this at all with very minimal cost to the district because um, that's what they do. They serve. They serve their community, they love their community, and they serve their community. And we were the benefactors of that. So if there is some way we could bring um, their their lead pastor in for a future meeting and just show our gratitude um, maybe with some um, examples of, of what they did this is the second time um, and, and, I, and I'm going to give Leslie up she and her husband worked two pretty hard days um, the second day that uh, that uh, second day of service uh, of serve your city uh, we had the WASC committee and and uh, Leslie had to run home and shower because she worked that morning, and her husband worked probably double shifts. And um, there's people in this community that just showed up, and and our school looks so good as a result of it. And these are projects that we never would have been able to afford. They built a, a block wall around the baseball field. Um, in in from dugout to dugout, um, planted palm trees. And, and I, I could go on for a long, long time, and I'll, and I'll shut up here, but I'm just amazed at, at what this organization did for, for, for us and for our kids. So thank you again. Um, and then I also want to thank all of the, the WASC committee members um, at the high school. I know that they put in a lot of work. Um, we don't know the tip of the iceberg what you all put in, um, but I've been told it's been an immense amount of work, and I'm, I'm very pleased and proud of, of the readout and, and the positive comments that we got from that committee. Um, you know, these are the things that, that I really want to celebrate in this organization because um, a huge, huge victory, and um, Credit goes to the, the previous site administrator. Credit goes to the current site administrator and the staff who implemented that vision and then showed it off in the WASC committee. So uh, what a victory for the whole organization. So um, Brian, I don't know if we can do something for all of those people, but I sure would love to. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Roger. Well, I think everything's already been said. I also um, had the opportunity to go to the art exhibition, um, and um, it was good to see the student work on display for them to receive recognition for the work that they do, and then have have a more of a real experience by having something in the gallery. I think 
that's a great opportunity for our students and um, many of them went on to the Groff expedition so that was that was great and um, I also went to WASC I mean it is it, it is uncommon to be able to say that a WASC visit was enjoyable but it actually was mm -hmm. um, and the the team that came out um, to validate the work that we do here in Ramona at Ramona High School um, they were really a wonderful group it's not always that way and so I thought that was wonderful um, they truly took on um, their role um, exactly the way that it's supposed to be done. And I've, I've done that before, so I, I know what that can be like. <laughs> um, but I, I just wanted to um, also congratulate um, our staff um, that have been recognized um, before this meeting and, and um, yeah. also our retirees and then um, also the extension of your, your contracts and um, you know having your whole family here. That, that was a lot of pressure, you know, just so you know. <laughs> but um, congratu congratulations on your um, kids slowly leaving the nest, your <laughs> having marriages and stuff. That's pretty awesome. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm um, looking forward to the to the next event. Um, we're going to go to the Who dinner. So looking forward to that. So, thank you. Excellent. Oh, yes. A drill. A drill. A drill. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not <laughs> And they managed to evacuate, I think it's 530 students. Is that the right number? <coughs> Including 60 disabled kids that went out in a different direction than the rest of the classes. It was so well organized. And I learned what, what this means, quiet coyotes. And they got them off campus in school buses in 34 minutes. And for that age group, to get them to cooperate and, and evacuate like quiet coyotes in 34 minutes was amazing. Very encouraging. Very encouraging for the parents of those kids who, who, who just had it demonstrated to them that this school is capable of protecting their kids and evacuating them in a very professional and very timely manner. This is a terrific evacuation. Absolutely. Drill. Absolutely, Dan. Yeah, yeah. And I was um, pleased to be able to boast about that a little bit at the planning group meeting that we had yeah. uh, earlier this month. And Lieutenant Vengler was there and um, substantiated the positive comments that I made there and, and that you've made tonight. So. Yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. All right, so I have a couple things. WASC, you guys mostly said it all, but I have been a part of more WASC uh, accreditation uh, processes than I can count as a parent and as a board member. I truly have lost count. I was thinking about it, like, and I, I couldn't remember how several, several in over the years. And that was smooth and actually enjoyable. Yeah, that readout was really great. Um, I heard one of our student board members mention 300 AP exams. Fantastic. That is just a, a, you know outstanding effort uh, for our students there to get themselves to that point with the help of their teachers, of course, to, to prepare for that many AP exams. <coughs> and uh, I also had the opportunity to visit uh, two open house nights last night. I think you and I passed each other both times, uh, first at, right, I waved to you from the car. Uh, first I was out at James Dukes and it was a festival. It was a festival of education and, and uh, just a, a really good time and you could see the families were really enjoying it. And over at Hanson, <coughs> such a huge turnout. I was really impressed by the turnout of those families there. Um, I get to Hanson's pretty much every year it's the school that's closest to my house, and it just always seems to fall at a time when I can make, which is wonderful. Um, this time, I had the unique and personal pleasure. <coughs> I didn't communicate with my family about where I was going to be last night, um, but when Chris Gunnett announced at the PTA meeting at the <coughs> beginning that I was there, 
um, suddenly my little granddaughter came running up because uh, she realized, oh, grandma's here, you know, which was pretty neat. <laughs> and I had the um, uh, pleasure of watching, and I'll get emotional, but my son, who had attended Hanson in their first uh, promoting class at their new campus, hold his daughter up to see his sixth grade photo on the wall oh, at the entry, which was just, sweet. yeah. Uh, and also to bid farewell to Chris Gunnett from that campus and look forward to seeing him over at RE where, of course, I have another grandkid. Um, <laughs> and uh, another mention was the senior walk. And so we do have, you're new uh, to our district, so don't miss the senior walk. It is, a, it is a, a really wonderful way for those high school uh, graduating seniors to, to conclude their academic career uh, from Ramona Unified. So don't miss it. Other board members, if you have a chance to just uh, sneak a peek at, at what they do, and if you have questions about that, check with staff and find out what that's all about, but it is not to be missed. And that concludes my report. So <clears throat> at this point, we are adjourning to closed session, but I do not expect to have any report out tonight. Uh, we just have a little bit of business to finish up, and thank you all for being here.